another hundred bucks. It being on or after seven o'clock, I'm going to open up the August 16th meeting of the Georgetown Conservation Commission. And on the agenda tonight, we have uh, several business uh, items, some enforcement issues to uh, review, and a number of hearings. So we'll start off with uh, at least one of the business items, and uh, that is 59 Bailey Lane. Do we have anyone representing uh, 59 Bailey Lane? I mean, 50, sorry, 57. 57, it's a all right. Close enough. So sorry. It was an issue on Bailey Lane. Sorry about that. How are you, Hi. Good. If you could just introduce yourself for the record. Yep, Tim Doherty, uh, live at 57 Bailey Lane. Okay. Well, I understand that there was some cutting there. We yep. kind of like the, 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 you know, implement a, make sure we have a corrective action. If you could kind of tell us a little bit about how that happened and. Yep, we cut the um, brush out of the back uh, area uh, behind our property. I believe Steve had some pictures of it. Yep. Um, in the uh, in the back, there's a small quick patio that's been back there for years. We did some clearing out in the area. Uh, had a brush pile. I was doing some storage and stuff back there. Um, Steve came out. Um, that was my wife. And he said we weren't allowed to cut back there, so we didn't do any more cutting. And to um, remove this, uh, the brush, bricks and stuff. So we've since um, issued the enforcement order. Uh, we removed the brush, the burn pile, uh, the brick, uh, building material that was back there. Uh, that's all been removed. And since then, we've also hired uh, a wetlands engineer to do the um, the map I, I don't know, uh, for the front of the property, as well as uh, the markings for the no cut zone in the back. Okay. The plan going around is the restoration plan that he's referencing. Thank you. All right. Uh, Steve, if you could just kind of give us your take on uh, what the situation was, what you observed, and, and uh, the plan. I haven't had an opportunity to review it. Again, so this came in um, earlier today. Luckily, there was a fairly decent old um, septic system replacement plan of the property, so we kind of had an idea where the traditional old lines were, what was out there. Um, I received a call um, regarding a concern from a neighbor regarding some cutting. Mm -hmm. When I visited the property the first time from a, not on property, the front area had a, a very kind of low-growing wetland that had lawn and some rocks up against it. Um, you know, over time, it, it was fairly clear, like, the mowing was encroaching on the wetland more and more. That was less of a concern at the time. The main area concern was in the back. There's a intermittent stream and wetlands. And there was some very recent cutting and piles of bricks and kind of a burn pile. It just, it looked like it was kind of gearing up for activity. When you see piles of bricks, they might want to be building something. Um, so I left a note on the door actually as the first contact and had some discussions, wrote the enforcement order, which the commission signed at the last meeting. Right. Right. This is a kind of a follow-up where the homeowner can come in and kind of introduce himself and what he's looking to do. I have been working with them on kind of a restoration plan. At some point, something has to be done. My recommendation was the back, because it was recently cut and the soil wasn't disturbed, was just to put in no-cut bounds and just leave it alone. So remove all the debris, all the material, all the potential future activities, and just leave it alone. And most of the stuff that was cut will grow back. So I'm, I'm less concerned about that. It's just more creating a good boundary to not encroach in the future. And right. so I made recommendations on a bunch of no cut stone bounds. So the plan they're actually working off of, it's my original doodle of what I'm recommending. And they added in some more narrative and some plant species that they would add into it. So yeah. sir, you, you were looking to eat just clear by your patio, is that what you said earlier? We're just clearing out some of the uh, brush and stuff uh, out of the back of the um, property. But you clearly understand now you can't, you yes. can't, uh, you know, cut. Yes, I've met with Steve since then uh, as well. Cut resource here. Yeah. State and local regulations which prohibit that. Yeah. So for the most part, the 
out front it's also putting in no cut stone bounds to better define the area out there though i think there's a little bit more heavy lifting that has to be done because there's some area that's been mowed and the lawn's encroaching so my recommendation was to cut out a strip of grass around the entire um, exact immediate wetland and restore it to a better state so that it creates a better buffer as it flows into the wetland from the existing mm -hmm. lawn and um, I, I would presume since you submitted it that you're okay with the proposal mm -hmm. um, yeah I, I think it's reasonable I've gone over it was built a few times and everything else we talked about it I mean in general I think it's reasonable and it creates the no cut bounds will create kind of a good boundary for future in, um, Kind of enforcement if there are issues in the future. Wow, it sounds like it was very clearly a wetland back there. This report says that there was standing water actually in the area. That's in the front. I'm sorry. I haven't had a chance to read no, no, it beyond no, no, no. that paragraph. In, 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 the, in the front, there is a, a wetlands area in the front. There's a row of rock around it, um, but yes, it is wet. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Here it says, we also reviewed the rear yard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But on this plan, it does look like, I mean, it's quite a downhill slope mm -hmm. towards this area. Yes. And it is actually marked as something of a real wetland. Is it really visibly a wetland? It sounds you, you, like you it is. You can see it from the street. Oh, you can. Yeah. Right. And the back has a channel. You know, it's an intimate stream with a channel. Right. It's fairly obvious, yes. Yeah. What was your plan out there? Out front? No, out the back. Just to kind of keep control of the brush and everything. Uh, my girls liked it, you know, wanted to use the patio and stuff out there. They, Played out back. They're getting older, so not as much. The more in life, just keep <coughs> more of the growth under the control. Was there a lot of poison ivy, et cetera? Is that what There's you quite a bit of poison about? ivy on the property. We've gotten rid of a lot of it, but there's still some. So this erosion control more or less shows the boundary of the wetland? Um, that shows more the, um, the erosion control just shows the limit of activity for the septic system. That okay. erosion control is separating the septic system from the wetlands. On the map, the wetlands are kind of flagged A1 through A10 in that dotted I line. I see them, yep. Yeah. So on the plan, I. The original wetland delineation only showed the front, I mean, the back edge of the wetland, not the other side. So I, I kind of <coughs> estimated where that was on the plan. Okay. So 13 no cut stone bounds? And how many of the uh, silky dogwood, upland shrub, button bush are we going? I think it's 24, give or take. He has a pretty good list of numbers. So on the, yes, there's a 23. So that's just the upland varieties. There's proposed wetland planting and also upland plantings proposed. So, sir, when, when will you, um, when would you be willing to undertake if we, we approve this uh, plan? Um, I don't know how much of a time period after approval um, there is. If there's a wait, is there a waiting period? I'm planning on starting as soon as I'm allowed to well, start. Since, since this is not, uh, you, you, this is not um, uh, like a notice. We'd like to do it in to, September. To, so it's an enforcement order. Yeah. You right. Know? So, yeah. Once we approve in this, I don't see any reason why you can't do it in that time frame. Right. Um, Bill had basically said August is not a good time That's to do correct. any planning because yep. they won't survive. So yeah, we I were looking for the middle of September. Right. I was to driving do the to try and do something this year and not, you know, push. Well, yeah. No, no, no. This we want to bring it to fruition yeah. and, and you know get things moving. So this schedule shows them starting in September. I really like this schedule showing that you're actually going to be tracking it. Yep. for at least a year if yep. not two to make sure that they remain viable and and, and we'll keep an, and we'll keep an eye we'll keep an eye on it we don't three. normally see a schedule that goes out that Correct. far where they show that they're going to be coming in so i just am saying i appreciate the schedule mm -hmm. 
Was that Bill that did that? Bill Manuel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are um, a butters also, Carl, just so you know. Okay. Any other comments from commissioners regarding this um, enforcement action? And as did I recall, we did not we did not uh, levy any fines for this. No. It was just in the yard. Did you did you work with Bill to come up with this planting plan? That's partly your. Mostly, yeah. And you're happy. Where um, I'm sorry, I can't really see where the stone bounds are on on here. The circles. If you look over here, over to the right, these little dots. See where it says. So no cut boundary with marker. So the circles here. Okay. So this All heavy these. dotted, heavy dotted line, and the circles. with the dots in the middle. Those are the stone bounds. Okay. So I, I was. They're in the front and the back. Correct. I was going to leave that a little bit flexible to see um, think, line of sight because yeah. typically a reg yeah. say 35 feet unless it's a turn. And so my plan on those is to when it gets to that point, refine that a bit. This was truly kind of a working draft to get us to this point. Mm -hmm. the, the details, um, you know, I was going to work with Bill on a couple more plantings mm -hmm. and the exact stone placement, um, but I think this, I just wanted to make sure before we got too far into it that the commission was okay with the direction we were heading in. Yeah, I'm okay with it, and yeah, it's, it's perfectly uh, fine from my perspective to have well, some slight variation on the bottom location yep. to adjust in the field. I mean, this doesn't even show off property. So yeah. there's, you know, the property line as you go down isn't shown on this. So I just have the dotted line just kind of fading out in that direction. That's to be determined at a later date. Okay. And just, sir, just so you know, we'll, we'll basically leave the enforcement order open until we kind of close no, this out. Are there any abutters to uh, 57 Bailey Lane? If you'd like to make a comment, you'd identify yourself for the record, you may. You don't have to. Should I speak to someone in uh, conservation? Uh, speak to the conservation division. That's us. That's, That's us. us. Relating, You're in the right place. Relating to what? What, okay. what project I are you just, here for? Um, I, I just wanted to, um, this was, uh, I, I received this in the mail. I just want to make sure that it's yeah. Um, so, Carl, this is a different project. Why don't you guys keep going, and I'll step outside and answer this gentleman's questions. Okay, cool. So, does uh, did uh, ma'am, did you want to make a comment? You don't. You don't have to, but I'm just. I. You know, it's well, a public meeting. We give people the option. No, no, we we are, we are the and um, the, the only thing that I want to make a comment is that uh, this no-touch tree line extends all the way to the street, from the, you know, from the back, from the back, from the back of the property, all, all the way down to the street, you know, down to the property line, and just do that. Okay. Because it does affect our privacy, and I don't think I just feel like it would make more sense, considering what has been transpiring. And um, just to make sure, I mean, obviously the rules and regulations. Right. Well, we're mostly we're we're bound by that too. So. Right. We're mostly focused here too, also on the, the fact that there was a cutting. You know, and it's it, what what directly affects that. I mean, those issues can be also looked at in the field. And a lot of times we have to adjust the plan <coughs> slightly once you go out and take a look at it, or once they start the the uh, repairs from the damage. Well, it's just that when. I talked with Stephen when he came out, or what his proposal when he showed it to me, it was um, that line of no cut, no disturb in the back. And then there was an area, I guess, from the middle of the pool over or whatever, which goes into the 75 foot mm -hmm. zone, which would need permission from the conservation Correct. to touch that. Um, and you know, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but our concern is that what happened before that that permission that conservation may never be asked and things will happen. And in order to avoid 
Well, this is the, one on right. This. this is why we keep the enforcement order open till everything gets corrected. So, you know, well, it, this, happens after them to say. No, well, you know, know again, that's... again, these things can be reissued as necessary. It's it's a legal mechanism we use to make sure things get fixed. Otherwise, you know, you may have assurances. Oh, don't worry, everything's going to be corrected. But this is a you know a legal mechanism to to make sure that it doesn't get forgotten. Can I ask a question? Where is the street? Is it down at the um, bottom? No, um, right over on, right where your hand is, your left hand. Right there, that's Bailey Lane, Bailey right there. Bailey Lane over yes. here? Yeah. Yes. So your concern is that the no-cut boundary continue over to the street? Can I ask her to show on the plan what she's thinking? I don't know how this would link with this. Or does I think, this, I think she, she wants this to continue um, up the street, this way? You know, th this is heading toward 133, oh, so it's down here. This so I think the, she's, this she's probably talking here. Know. Yeah. Can she's, you show us on the plan? The line. I can show you yeah. what she's talking about. If I can. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need mine, too. What, what you have she's talking plan? about all the way down so. the whole length of the property line. Oh, so we um, have Bailey no Lane. cut bounds. So all I'm here. talking. So he, he has it right here. here. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this, this I guess, here. is mm -hmm. the fence is the from the here. pool, the or something like that. I think there's a fence and around this is the, the street. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the tree line, but there is like a, is like a, a tree line. There's okay. a tree line that goes all the way down to here. One conversation, please. There's a tree line. I don't know if this how far this with what he property on, but there's a there's a trees well, all the way from over here. It would be helpful if we had 200 yards <coughs> off site to, to see 200 feet off site to see what 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 is here because if there is a wetland here, but there's no wetlands. That's our our yard. There so there is. The, there is. The, so the wetland, the stream continue down, okay, and yeah. it's shared between both properties. So, yes. um, so all the wetlands are on property that were impacted. Um, we're not, this is not a Nosman tent where we're looking at the whole, everything, bigger right. picture. It's we're focusing in on the two areas of concern. Right. Okay. So just to refine that a bit. So so she, but she wanted it to go so all the way down to the street this way. Just so that tree I line. I just need to know, legally speaking, what we're allowed to do as far as. That's not the street down here. This, this is this right here. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So this way. This, this way. I mean, yeah. 200 this feet. This is what she's asking. Two, 200 feet off property when we're trying to understand setbacks and, and building and. and that type of regulation stuff. Right. For enforcement and, and stuff like this, we tend not to, well, we, I mean, we have a plot, we have a professionally drawn plot plan of the property that shows the entire property. That what you're looking at is just a copy of that, focusing in on the area of concern. So you want to see the entire property kind of surveyed. We need to stay on. No cut bounds along no. something that's not a resource area. No, no. Area. We, we, we have that's to stay. We have to stick to the damaged area. Right. That's just we, what so I'm asking. We can't, we can't do it can. along here unless there's a resource to be protected. My concern is that from here on, the conservation needs that's, to be t caught if something gets cut. This, uh, yeah. So every. Well, the, this the commission has jurisdiction over almost the entire property. You have a wetland in the front and a wetland in the back. The 100 foot buffers pretty much cross each other. We're addressing new cutting of kind of not previously disturbed area. We're addressing it. Everything in between is still jurisdictional, and the applicant is aware that no more cutting can be done without permission. We're addressing two direct resource impacts right now. Okay. In general, there's jurisdiction over the entire property and the activities associated with it. So there mm -hmm. is an unspoken, don't cut anything in between, no trees down without permission. That's, any, that's any, any future activity by either person. Yeah. Either, I mean, this jurisdiction encro encroaches on the neighbor's property too, and the other neighbor's property. Okay, so what is being requested is a no cut boundary line across here. Yeah. There's no way. There's no reason to justify it from a right. regulatory standpoint because right. that's more of a property boundary, exactly. not a right. environmental. We're 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 putting no cut bounds to protect the resources, right. not property boundaries. Yes. Okay. Okay. That was that was the direction you guys are heading in. Yep. But you know that being said, if if you know someone encroaches again yeah. further on these areas, it becomes another enforcement yeah, issue. Yeah, trees can't come down. Yeah. Trees, because then there's another. 
this is just my recommendations of the no cut line. It, it can be modified by the commission. Right, but we, we typically right don't now. put, you know, we don't use bounds to make boundaries for the whole property line. We do right. to protect resource areas. So people remember when they're running their lawnmowers around, et cetera, or we chainsaws that, oh, this is a, this is a protected resource area. But and is this a tree line, this scalloped? So those bounds would go through the middle of the woods. Right. So the front yard is mostly lawn with trees. So the scalloped in the backyard is more native na natural up to lawn. And the front yard, pretty much the entire front lawn, is a mowed lawn. So the, the kind of scalloped doesn't really define, it defines a tree line, but it doesn't define kind of the nature of the tree line. I mean, this, this is acceptable to me for now, but it's, again, the EO is still open, and we can modify the EO at any time along the way. If, if the problem continues, or we find that this isn't adequate, we can modify that EO at a meeting. All we have to do is change it. Say we want to modify the EO for 57 Bailey Lane, and it's done, and we can, we can change it. I think the goal of this EO was just to restore what's been done here, and and here too. And, pre and prevent activity in and the backyard. And prevent activity. We're not asking so now you're store. aware that mm -hmm. you can't be cutting anything in there. Yep. We don't need to lace the, enclose the entire property in no cut bounds. It's jurisdictional. There's a difference. Right. Okay. Any other comments? Let's see, do we need a, do we need a, uh, a vote to ratify this? I'm thinking maybe. I would, I would recommend just a, a motion to approve the restoration plan. Um, I think that's kind of the action item. Because um, the enforcement order has not been modified to take into account this discussion, I can, I'll, I'll modify the enforcement order and you can ratify it at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, at this point, I think it's just... Okay, we can accept it. If we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the restoration plan for 57 Bailey Lane, which is dated, which was prepared by Wetland and Land Management and is dated August 15th, 2018. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded to approve the restoration plan for 57 Bailey Lane, dated August 15th, 2018. Is there any further discussion? Do we working with Steve in the field? Uh, to be, yeah, you can. Yeah. So, so mo motion, re motion uh, to, to be uh, adjusted by the agent in the field. Is there any further discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All abstaining. Motion carries. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Question. Real quick question. When. Oh, this has to be written up and everything before. Is, is there a time? Is there a time period, grace uh, period before any work can start? I know I got to meet with Steve prior to. We normally. I know on a DEP it's 21 uh, days. wetlands, it's a 20 day uh, after it's written up. I don't know. Is I think that it, not, same for this? There's not a specified date in an enforcement action because it's directly under the control of the commission the entire length of the time that it's over. Okay. Just email your proposed schedule Monday. Okay. And I'll work with you on your schedule. Okay. And then we'll set up a time to meet with you and Bill. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, address Thank the you. ladies' concerns. Nothing can be done in there anyway, so it doesn't need yeah. All right. Now well, it's awkward if the applicant has left. I can talk to her Monday. All right. I missed the conversation. So, um, okay. It should have been. Okay. That's fine. So we can just hit Warren Street. It's just a continuation, Carl. We'll All right. Wait now. Being on or after, uh, we're going to move on. So, ma'am, we did hear your concerns, and uh, that, again, that EO stays open. So, if anything changes, um, we we have that open and can modify that at any, any time and continue that. It stays open until everything's corrected. Worried about what happens after. 
again, a new one can be issued at any point along the way. So we oversee it for three years more regularly, and then after that, it's as needed. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. It being on or after uh, seven, what's the time? Seven o'clock. I'm going to 7.15, rather. Where is it? Why isn't it? Why am I seeing 59? Warren oh. Street. Different 59. Yeah, that's what's confusing me. It being on or after 7 o'clock, I'm going to open up a notice of intent. It's a continuation of 59 Warren Street. And that was land clearing to restore to original farmland and wetland properties, and the applicant has requested a continuance. Correct. And uh, September 20th at 735, please. I'll entertain that motion. Mr. Chairman, let's continue. 59 Warren Street. B161 0859 GCC 2018 04 to September 20th at 735. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded to continue the notice of intent hearing for 59 Warren Street to September 20th at 735. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Motion carries. All right. It being on or after 7.15, I'm going to reopen an, an RDA for 360 North Street, GCC 2018-07, uh, the renovation of existing garage within the buffer zone uh, to wetlands. If I could have the applicant in our consultant, and if you could identify yourself for the record, please. Hi, my name is Kyle Simmons of 360 North Street. Hello. So, could explain kind of what your intentions are? Uh, the intentions are to, exactly as it sounds, to renovate a current existing garage within the uh, wetland buffer zone, um, including, you know, it will include, you know, grading of land, removing parts of, evaluating the, you know, the structure, making sure it is, you know, structurally sound and what. Now, is this a shed or a garage? Does it have a Does it have a floor? Does it have footings? What? It does. So it's a garage. So the the structure in itself is consists of three parts: garage, carport, and attached shed. Um, and there is a, a footing for both both structures, for the shed and for the garage as well. And, and it's a poured slab, poured slab for the uh, garage piece, and the shed is up on concrete center. Block. So, is the plan to reuse the existing poured slab, or are you going to have to have that dug out and a new one put in? Because there obviously is a, a significant difference in uh, disturbed areas doing that. Yeah, the idea would be able to use if. It comes back that I, I can use the existing port slab in the building or the garage. I would use that. Um, otherwise, I would have to, you know, reevaluate from that standpoint. And it's it, the desire is to rebuild or take it down initially is due to safety reasons. It's falling down. Yeah. It, we've had some terrible snowstorms these past couple of years, and it has not really survived to my liking um, so for definitely safety reasons aesthetically reasons it's just would be better if it kind of came down and it's something that we could you know rebuild up properly and that could sustain future snowstorms and weatherings so the closest point is roughly 30 feet from the wetlands um, so it, it's pretty close and my only concern would be if it's determined that the, the supports are not up to par, and they, they would consider digging and putting in sauna tubes and other things. Once you get into the soil remover, I'd be a little bit more concerned and want erosion control. At this point, it's kind of a very, you know, the big concern is getting it down and then evaluating how best to build it. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, that, that, the, the, I agree, that's, that's the, a concern. I mean, if you could use the existing footings and slab, the, the, the um, 
the potential for erosion or damage is fairly minimal, but if right. you have to dig down six plus feet to put in the new sauna tube yep. footings, uh, you get a much greater potential. And I guess at this point, the applicant Most isn't 200% sure how that's going to, you know, how that's all going to evolve into. And so I, I think looking at a potentially worst case scenario as far as the permitting of it, and then if the applicant chooses to do less digging, then it's easier and there's no modifications to the proposal. So at this point, you know, I would be comfortable just almost presuming the entire area is going to be excavated out potentially. So we're talking erosion control and kind of controlling where the dirt gets dumped. And then if that doesn't happen, then it just, you know, we'll, through working with me, we can lessen up on some of those conditions as far as what the commission's concerned about. What's the footprint of the, the uh, existing structure? Uh, let's see, it's 38 by 24. Oh. Almost the size of a house. Yeah. Is there any potential of reducing its size once you kind of evaluate and you kind of? Absolutely. I think at this point it was just that was the entire footprint of the garage, the carport, and the shed. Um, realistically, I don't need it to go that far over close yep. to the wetlands, and probably you know with the wa you know just water and the the sponginess of the soil it probably wouldn't be the best of ideas to have something that close anyway um, so it would be perfectly willing to shrink the the size of that footprint this was just to show what i have yep. currently and the slab is closer to the house and that would most likely be the, the more valuable rebuild location yes. yep uh, you can't really see it on there but in the garage section yep. there's about a 14 the 14 foot slab okay perfect it's width so so then we're talking um you know potentially that would be closer to like 60 plus feet away from the wetland. Well, I, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused in terms of the filing. You know, this is a, an, an RDA. I mean, mm -hmm. is, is the intent under an RDA just to take the existing garage down, or is this to construct nope. a new one, too? So I was, it, it, to me, this is kind of like a rebuild of an existing structure. Right, but it's, um, I'm looking at just the size of the footprint. Cor correct, but it's a, it's, a, it's a rehab of an existing building. They could take two by two by two by four right. down and avoid almost filing if, the commission at all. If they had to redo the whole footing and dig out six feet around yep. a 24 by 38 that's yep. as big as a, that's as big as a split house or a ranch correct i mean there's 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 the ability to enforce and oversee under an rda the reason i didn't i felt uncomfortable going with the notice intent on this is because it's an existing structure and there's a lot of potential for almost no digging depending on how it's framed um, well, that, yeah, that's where I asked the question whether it was yeah. like in two parts, whether they're going to take it down for us and then kind of... I mean, my, my expectation is that this permit would cover the removal and the, the build, the rebuild of the structure. And again, if it wasn't a rebuild, it would be a full bull notice of intent because of its distances and closeness to the resources. The biggest condition and the biggest concern is the erosion control. And as long as that's put up, there's really... that's that reduces the, the liability and the risk to the resources as far as this project is concerned. The actual, you know, as a, looking down on it, there's no difference between this and when they're done. And, and that's kind of the standard I look at when it comes to the notice of intent. Um, you know, even if they dug that down to a slab, we can still oversee the digging where the soil goes and the erosion control. Oh, we want to be, you know, if, if they're going to take up the old slab, then you've got, uh, you know, Correct. concerns can we split about... split it in half? Like, we will issue an RDA for the first demo or investigative part of the project and then potentially ask for an NOI if they have to rebuild. I mean, they're going to rebuild. They're going to rebuild, no, no, which I'm is sorry. not a, a if they degrees have up. to take out the old slab yeah. and I mean, completely re-engineer. You don't force, I mean, you're talking, you're not going to rip up the old slab. You're going to tear everything down and at some point reevaluate building and either build over just the slab or extend it with sauna tubes past it. I mean, what are the odds of doing a 40 by 40 slab mm -hmm. out here? Very small. That's okay. that, way too big. That was my impression. I, yeah. I just didn't feel like they were, there was a realistic opportunity here to dig out the entire thing and start over. It would only be essentially extending it maybe I don't know, doubling the size of the, of the initial slab, which was the 14-foot section, right. and that would just be kind of refurbishing that initial slab, so it's not falling apart and cracking. exactly falling apart, cracking, sinking in. I just don't um, see any major. I just don't see any. I don't see any digging. Foot part of it. Existing slab. There's which a 14 by 24. 
But you're talking about potentially doubling the size of that and turning it into the 24 foot. Am I right? That would be the only other extension that uh, would be potent, you know, that I was potentially foreseeing. So there's currently nothing there where the 24 foot part of this well, there's a there's is. a structure there's just no slab underneath it oh i see so it's a structure but it would need to have the footings and the whole slab and, poured and, for that which correct. takes them to within 30 feet of the correct. wetland but that could be done with sauna tubes that's an option to have the slab there um at least when we had talked previously i didn't think that that was really a viable like is it you know 99% chance that it might, you're not going to go that far. I'm not going to go though. I mean, it's the whole structure is 38 feet wide. Yeah, I don't plan on going 38 feet wide. Yeah. Um, and so the reduction is going to be from the wetland side. So right now, it's the closest point is 30. The other side's 45. We're talking getting closer to 50 and 60 feet with sauna tubes potentially or refurbishing an existing slab. So. Again, it's the commission's. So with sonar tubes, what you're t saying? I just think it's is very that unlikely. There won't be the invasive, like, Correct. excavating that would go. We're on. not talking a full-size excavator on this project at any point. Even if that slab is extended, this is not a major digging operation. It's just to potentially expand that slab a little bit, or just do a few sonar tubes, which can be managed with good communication, erosion control, and control of where the soil goes. You know, if it goes into the back of a truck and goes away immediately, Sorry. there's no risk. I'm a girl. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean when you say it's being done with sonar tubes? Well, so, it's being just they're digging it. You can do like with a post hole digger in a, yeah. and fill up a wheelbarrow with dirt. I mean, this potential for and that. And what will the floor be like at that point? You're I mean, it could be dirt, it could be because poured, it could be pavers. Well, usually with sauna tubes, you're going to have some sort of wood structure built. Yeah, it's supported by decking. So we're not pouring more concrete and excavating Correct. and pouring well, because more concrete if you're doing a on slab, that area. If you're doing a slab, they have to do the slab and then actually footings under the slab. So they have to dig below, like six feet down, all around, and then pour concrete, right? And then but that's backfill not what it, they're talking and about. then a slab. Am I right? That's not what they're talking about. So, yeah, sauna tubes are like almost like the the cardboard things. They dig yes. down straight and then they pour concrete into right. it. Okay. Don't build things. I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Ask all the questions you want. That's why you're sitting on that side of the table. So you know, I, I can live with the, the sauna tubes, uh, you know, because it is a, is a rebuild. But I'm, you know, I, I would be concerned if we're going to expand the thing significantly I, again, just based on the size of the footprint, and uh, without kind of going through a normal process. Uh, yes. It's a it is a repair. So I mean, I can manage it, and if things come up, then yeah. we can readdress it. I mean, that's why I think the good communication and the applicant's been great communicating with me on kind of the proposal and moving forward with it. So. I don't want to really push the limits of what an RDA is supposed to be used for. Yeah. If it's, if it's right, I, I see the difference is it's a rehab of an existing. And I think that's at least the standard I looked at when I thought that this was, I thought more reasonable as an RDA than a noseman tent. It's, it's truly a rehab versus if it's new construction, you know, we're going to do, what's going to be there will be better than what's there now when he's done environmentally because of the structure and keeping everything contained in the building versus every time it rains, having water flush through the whole garage and, you know, shed area. What's on the floor of the garage now? Uh, well, the one side's concrete. Uh, yeah. I actually didn't see the other side. I didn't go what into the structure. It? The other side is uh, it's cinder block base with um, just flooring. Oh, okay. Like so wood we're flooring? Really just like wood flooring, wood like flooring yes. Yeah, we're it's talking a shed. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. It kind of throws me because we're talking a footprint 30, 38 by 24. That's a, a that's a honking shed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because the sh the shed carport everything that was attached to the garage or where you know it looks like it's been there for for some time, but it was you know it was there. Okay. So my impression based on what you said is that this is minimal disturbance, as you said, the post hole digger. They're just replacing the slab that's currently there and then mm -hmm. a few post holes for the mm -hmm. sonar tubes and then like new perhaps wooden flooring or whatever like a deck yeah. decking is what I'm imagining and is that right and very likely it will get smaller it, it can't get bigger it's already pretty big right. it's either gonna stay the same and it's very likely to get a smaller to some degree and any any smaller size will be away from the wetlands. does it have a roof currently yeah 
Yep, roof. Yeah, it's under a roof. If okay. we were doing an RDA, I think the thing to do in this kind of this is one of these that you probably want to put conditions. On Correct. The end, can Correct. That you, you can. That you right. can't. That this was only applicable if the footprint stays within the existing, and we're not actually growing the project, mm -hmm. and there's not uh, 160 foot yeah. by 30 foot. I mean, the horse barn, all of a yeah. sudden it grew out of nowhere. Right. Okay. I mean, the actual dimensions will not change. They, they will not get bigger. The second that gets bigger, it would have been a notice of intent because any expansion's new activity where it wasn't before. The only reason that I'm, I'm kind of viewing it the way I am is because it's existing. Yeah, we, and if they weren't proposing potentially sauna tubes, if we were just literally tearing it down and rebuilding the same spot, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Because we've been we've been burned before, it's been a while, but in the past, uh, RDAs, about people yeah. just saying like RDA approved, and they say, yeah. well, that means I can do what I want. Because yeah. you said it was negative. Mm -hmm. So they, they did what they want. So you can always you can always drop an enforcement order on it if it doesn't go the direction that as you know, as discussed. But again, the applicant's been very good about working with me on this up to this point. I don't foresee any problems. And if there are bring them back in front of the commission. So like I, said, I, I would like to see a condition that it not be uh, you know, outside of the existing footprint. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the proposal right. is saying that. So again, it can't hurt to restate that in a condition. But you know, my other conditions would be you know, to work with the agent. And you know, if at any point soil is being proposed to be disturbed, that a siltation erosion control be put in place. Any other comments? We just covered my question. Any butters to 360 North Street? Do you want to make a comment? If you identify yourself for the record, you may. Uh, no comment. He's good to go. Just, uh, what was your name, sir? Ian. Ian? Yep. Last name? Uh, Hoover, G-U-G-G-E-R, 364 North Street. Thank you. Did you get that, Steve? I did. Okay. So, even if we issue a negative determination with conditions, that's a negative con determination. The conditions that are described in here still hold. Mm -hmm. if, I guess if, if basically if you also state that, you state that as part of the conditions, okay. you have to follow what, what right. is written here. Otherwise, you have to come back and see us. Okay. And uh, I guess if everyone's okay with that, I'd entertain a motion to issue a negative determination because if you issue a positive, it has to become a notice of intent. This yeah, says, however, this does say rebuilding of existing structures, including pouring foundation and grading of land. What grading are you planning to do? I'm not uh, an engineer, so I'm not 100% <laughs> positive on all the exact work that would be necessary uh, for rebuilding a structure. Um, so, but. Yeah, I, I, I think it was a catch-all for potentially doing that. The, the site's pretty flat, and there's really no, I don't, again, unless they're ripping out the entire structure and pouring a full new foundation, there's no real reason for any significant soil disturbance. If that happens, the, the applicant will be back before you for modifications to this. Okay. Because that's not what my understanding of what this was being. You know what would have really helped us is more, more information, like photographs of, of what you're working with. Mm -hmm. and, I should have, should have done that, I'm sorry. <laughs> and like a better description of actually what you're doing. And also, this plan, really, there isn't a lot of information on this plan. Mm -hmm. Like there's no grade. Is it completely flat? Is mm -hmm. that why there's it no... It drops off, yeah. Again, I think the standards of information you can get out of an RDA for a rehab is different than a full-blown notice 10 for a new application. So the plans are not perfect. Um, the applicant did the best they could on the descriptions. A lot of my colleagues in other towns wouldn't even have this be filed before the Conservation Commission because it's a rehab of an existing structure. I'm walking a very fine line between trying to prevent this gentleman from paying $5,000 in engineering and filing a notice of intent, registry of deeds, all these other fees. Um, again, you're correct. It's not, it, it's not a ten thousand dollar application. You're correct, but I, I think given what he's proposing and all the conversations <coughs> I've had with him, I think I recommend an RDA for the for all of the reasons of my all my previous discussions that you guys aren't <coughs> capturing in that twenty minute discussion. So, um, you know, I do apologize. There's not as much information as 
you guys are used to seeing for some of the larger There's applications. There's some alarming words in here. 30 feet. Yeah. Grading. Yeah. And it's also a huge structure. <laughs> Excavation. This, this isn't a those, are, those are words yeah. we're supposed to pay attention and to. That's and it's all. Not, and it's not a 10 by 10 shed. Right. It is a very large structure. Um, oh. It's almost the same size as the house. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, the goal here is that it doesn't become a house. Exactly. Nor do too. I want it to be. I'm sorry, You've been burned by that too. What? Which what? The garage is now becoming a house. Oh yeah. <laughs> Somebody lived there. We're dealing with former traumas. <laughs> I mean, but. one of the conditions can be any you know any any significant um, excavation deemed you know deemed significant by me requires them coming back for a full blown notice of intent. I mean, there's catch alls you guys can put in place. Um, if they're pouring cement over an existing slab just because to, to clean it up a bit because it's cracking and falling apart, and they're just bringing you know shovel around the outside edge to put forms in, I don't consider that significant. If they're talking ripping everything out and pouring a 24 by 38 full foundation, then you know you can condition it so if that happens, they come back and file notice of intent. You're approving what you want to approve and not approving what you don't want to approve. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we issue a negative determination for the RDA for 360 North Street with the following conditions. That they work with Steve in the field to put um, erosion control in during the length of the project. The that any enlargement of the working area yep. will be brought back before us mm -hmm. and that if it turns into something more than a sonar tube yeah, minor, decking yeah, minor, addition, addition. minor addition that it also comes back before us that it's being regarded as a negative determination on the basis of the simplicity of the replacing an existing structure. Replacing the existing structure. Thank you. That's a good word, simplicity. Otherwise, it would not be. Is there a second for? Second. We have a second, and it's a motion that's been seconded to issue a negative determination for 360 North Street with. Uh, the conditions uh, that the applicant worked with the agent, that there's erosion control and the enlargement needs to be come before the commission. And, uh, and that if there's it, a change in the if plan. If there's any change in the plan, uh, that they have to come before the agent. What was the first, the other one? The, the reference to simplicity? That, that it is that It is an replacement. It is basically it's, it's, it's been passed as a negative determination because, because it's these, a replacement because it, it's, of it, an it's existing. A, sim a simple replacement of an existing yep. structure. Is there any further discussion? Okay, that's a mouthful. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining? I'll obtain a motion to close the RDA for 360 North Street. Mr. Chairman, oh. I'd like to make a motion to close the um, RDA on 360 North Street. Is there second. A, there's a motion that's been seconded to close the RDA for 360 North Street. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All abstaining. Thank you. In your case, the word negative is a good thing, in case you're worrying. Okay, I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I was like, is positive good? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> All right, uh, we have a new notice of intent for Five Bella Woods, DEP 161-0862, construction of a new above ground pool within the BBW. If, if I can have the applicant and our consultant, and if you can identify yourself on the record, and do you have some green cards for me? Yes, I do. I'm Eric Byrne, the homeowner. Thank you. Do you want the DEV transaction copies? Yes, um, please. Yes. Thank you, Thank you. And one thing is on 
this. Mm -hmm. that one. Yep. They had the old property owner. Yep. The name on it. Yeah, that's and fine. That. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So. And one of them, mm -hmm. PJ, put his name on the applicant. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you walk us through your project, sir? So, we'd just like to put an above ground pool. It is within 100 feet of the no tuck zone. Um, closest point is uh, 59 and 77 and a half feet to the no tuck area. Uh, it's going to be right up against the uh, pre existing deck on the property. I love that. The no touch area. That's a good name I need for it. So the, the best, no yeah. touch it. So it's 77 feet where 70, it's out, so it's outside the 75 foot kind of, that's the standard you'd be looking at. The 59 is to the property. Property line, line sorry. Yeah, Thank so you. More of a zoning thing. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to clarify because it was 59 yeah. a bigger deal. Let's see if I ask on that one. So this is an above ground pool? Yes, sir. So there would be normally minimal excavation here, just typically a sand bed, no I assume? No excavation, non-permanent structure. Is the deck going to get enlarged at all to meet out with it? Same the size. pool's going to go to the, the deck. pool's go right to the deck, yeah. So if there's, a, there's something there already, Pre-existing deck. It's a. Per I'm sorry. I was I'm reading sorry. something else. What yes, it's a pre-existing deck. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, so the deck is already there. You're just cutting a hole in it. Not even or a you're hole. Just sticking a. Um, just sticking it's the going hole. up to it. Yep. Okay. About, just abutting it. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm right behind you. A, a round pool or a pool with it won't have a deep end. Rectangle. Uh, all one. All one depth. Uh, four feet. What kind of a filtration system are you going to have? Uh, um, a salt water filtration system. <coughs> Gibraltar Pools is going to be doing it. Oh, yeah, we typically don't like if anyone does any like back flushes toward the resource area. Yeah, I know. And um, so I talked to the contractor just. I was thinking of erosion control with these, and the last pool they did, I was actually there when they were doing some of the excavation. They bobcat kind of the grass and some of the soil mm -hmm. down like six inches, literally put it into the back of a truck, and then dump sand, sand and right. spread it. And so as far as erosion control, given the distance, and there's a pretty hefty buffer there of vegetation, um, literally he's putting the main thing down in two or three hours, the main flat area. I don't even think erosion control is really justified, given that there's really no big piles of dirt and it's not moving doing material around. Unless you're and back doing it in one of those torrent rainstorms we have. So I mean, you can condition some of these. Some of the conditions the commission's at put in the past is, um, you know, no work to be done when it's raining and things like that. If you're worried about that, you could always. But you know, I can't imagine these guys want to be doing the dirt work in the thunderstorm either. So. Yeah, give, given that it's not a permanent structure. Minimal digging. If it was a if it was an under you know a bigger hole being dug, I'd, I'd have more concerns over that. Any uh, other comments? Are there any abutters to uh, five Bella Woods? Moving on. Can I ask about the NHESP locust map? Mm -hmm. Is this shaded area? The resource area for the NHSP. I see it. That's usually that shade is usually the floodplain. I can't tell from here. Is it? Is it? Really? Is there a legend? Uh, there is, but I can't really tell what it's saying. Mm -hmm. I have it now. The net, the national heritage mapping that I looked at did not have this marked as national heritage endangered species habitat. Um, Oh, it must not be. Look over here on the right. Mm -hmm. It has a green, it would have a green cross hatching yeah. on it if it was. I, I think okay. they, they zoomed great. in on showing it wasn't. So this is a National ha yep. Heritage Mapping showing the town and it Got wasn't it. highlighted. 
Okay. Sorry, good. I checked into I that, just, so I, I didn't see that map in the application. I checked on the site, yeah. so I knew it wasn't, so yeah. I was confused. Okay, that's was. great. It's a pretty isolated wetland that it's a, that it bit here. Okay. Any other uh, comments? Okay. I'd entertain a motion if anyone would like to make one. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to Make a motion to approve the NOI at Five Below Woods DEP number one sixty one zero eight six two GCC two thousand twelve. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded to approve the notice of intent for Five Bella Woods DEP one six one zero eight six two. Uh, any conditions or not? No. I put in some of the standard ones are not accepting the wetland line, work with the agent in the field, stuff like that. Would you like to be motion <laughs> those? Really a wetland not accepting line. the wetland line. Not accepting the wetland line. Not accepting the wetland line. Do yeah. I have to say the whole so, thing? So, yeah, again? you basically, no, no. remotion, just, remo just okay. modify okay. your motion. Okay, so I'll make a motion to re modify the NOI at Five Below Woods to not accept the wetland line. Yeah. So uh, we have a motion, and it's been seconded. I second to it. approve Five Bella Woods, uh, and not accept the well in line. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstaining. Motion to close Five Bella Woods. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close Five Bella Woods. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded to close Five Bella Woods. Is there any further discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Thank you. <laughs> Moving right along. Let's see. Uh, it being on or after 745, I'm going to reopen a notice of intent for 203 East Main Street, DEP 161-0857. That's construction of a re uh, residential recycling drop-off area within the buffer. And uh, we have a request to continue? Correct. And do we have a date? September 20th at 7.40. September 20th. Just a quick overview. The third party review got started about a week and a half ago. Uh, Jillian has been on the site twice now to kind of inspect and see, you know, I think the line is pretty accurate because the slopes are so steep before it hits the wetland that they, none of the lines have been moved. No flags have been moved to date. Um, so they've got to start getting into like the stormwater and evaluating the project in its entirety. Yeah, and as I recall, one of the things we also wanted to do once uh, a third party was to kind of come up with a site plan. I mean, not a site, site plan, a site walk. Correct. It's probably best to schedule that the next meeting once the review is done. So yeah, we're still right. kind of in progress. And also when the applicant's here, too. So Correct. You know, we want to have them their input, too. So I'll entertain a motion to continue. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue to 03 East Main Street, DEP 161-0857, GCC 201805, to September 20th at 7.40. Second. We have a motion, it's been seconded to continue 203 East Main Street. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Two, Aye. Act 2, 2 September 20th at 7.40. Is there any further discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstaining. Excellent. And let's see, moving along again, uh, we have um, it being on or after 
8 o'clock. I'm going to open a new notice of intent for 12 Beverly Drive, DE Poo 161 08. That's the demolition or rebuilding of a single family home. If I could have the applicant and or consultant, if you identify yourself for the record, <laughs> and if you have green cards for us. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Matt Steinell. I'm from Millennium Engineering. Um, I have uh, here, and I don't know if it matters for the purposes of reading into the record, but the DEP file number that was on the agenda was abbreviated. There's actually a, a longer number there that's identified on the state's comment sheet. Um, so just to have the record be complete. Um, I have a, a, a large set of the plans here with the resource area uh, as identified by West Environmental uh, shown here in blue uh, with the subsequent 50 foot, 75 foot and 100 foot lines highlighted there in pink, orange and yellow. So you can see the proximity of the existing uh, structure and, and site features on the existing conditions plan that's shown before you. Uh, page two of the design, I'll flip to real quick. This is the proposed uh, page for the project. Um, what the applicant is proposing to do is to uh, remove the existing single family um, home that's on the property uh, to construct a new single family dwelling uh, with a full foundation with a drive in under garage coming up the driveway. Uh, the majority of the work being proposed is outside of the buffer zone for the resource area that was identified on the site. Um, so the house is completely out of the buffer zone, the driveway is completely out of the buffer zone, and the reason we're here tonight uh, primarily uh, without an RDA and we, we went with the full notice of intent uh, is because of the proximity to the wetlands for the water line out front which cuts in closer than 75 feet. So uh, we came in and met with Steve in the office and, and inquired whether an RDA was appropriate because all the rest of the work is greater than 75 feet away and uh, the water line kind of being the closest point there kind of triggered um, the idea of doing a notice of intent to make sure it encompassed everything and there'd be no um, concerns with uh, how it was filed. Now the existing house, does that have a foundation? Or it, has a, it has a crawl space under a portion of it and I think it has some uh, cinder blocks and stuff along the edges but I don't know that it's supported it's much more by like a camp type it's thing. more like a cabin, yeah camp. Um, we went out to the site with the, uh, the Board of Health. We conducted <coughs> excuse me, some soil testing on site, um, found some shallow to ledge areas in the rear of the existing house, came out front to in front of the existing house, which is what pushed, forced us to push the house further back on the property to make room for that reserve area at the top of the slope there. And then we came down uh, on the slope there, coming down towards the uh, road and, and did some additional test pits there. Um, our initial thought was for uh, ease of constructing the system to do it at the top of the slope and put the reserve area on the slope. Um, after having sized it out and looked at the amount of fill that was needed, the retaining wall that would have been needed would have been five, six feet along the driveway, down along the road, and actually moving it down the slope shrunk the wall, shrunk the amount of fill that was needed and made it uh, less expensive to build, it, less of an eyesore, and you know, ultimately the preferred way we ended up going with this. So the applicant here has a little bit of fill in the front yard and along the side of the house that comes within 100 feet of the buffer. And then down by the, uh, the leach field, there's a little bit of fill on that one edge there and the end, the end of the retaining wall that's along the road that comes inside the buffer zone. So those are the activities that we're here tonight requesting permission. So the, 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 obviously the septic is part of this, correct? Well, the septic itself is greater than 100. It's just the fill that's used to backfill it. When we blend it down to the original ground, that fill extension comes into the buffer. Has it been approved by the Board of Health? Uh, my understanding is that they reviewed it, and I was told that an approval letter was pending being issued, but they had no issues with it. I, have the, I actually have it on my phone. Yes. They sent it to you, Matt, also. Okay. Got sent it this afternoon around. around uh, so, just for the record, sir, if you could identify yourself. Fred Habib. Okay. Fred, uh, Fred Habib is actually the abutter next door, and he's the prospective buyer for the property. Okay. And so, yes, I, I did recall receiving, I don't, didn't receive a letter, but I received an email from the Board of Health Department indicating that they had approved it. Uh, Steve, you've been out to the site? I have. Any uh, comments? No. 
I don't know, Steve, if you want to pass those around, that's just a, a couple photos I took of the actual building. You can kind of see, you know, it's... Well, it looks like it's an improvement from a perspective of bringing the uh, project away from the resource areas and not trying to necessarily rebuild the existing camp into a giant house in its current location. I mean, the only thing I'd maybe suggest is just erosion control along that slope because it is fairly, it, it's pretty flat and then drops off. Mm -hmm. um, there's no erosion control being proposed. I think that's the only thing that you could. We, we, we show erosion control on the plan. It. it is a line there with a, a line dash EC for erosion control. Oh, there it is, really far down. Hey, well, we have it near the top of the slope because that's the limit of where the yard is currently. Oh, yeah. So we show it there. We also show approximately 30 feet off of the wetland line a proposed post and rail fence, which is more for safety because it's near the top of the slope, but it also will act as a delineator. Okay. I, I missed see that. the erosion control line. Sorry. It's much. Lo it it's lower there? down than I was thinking. Oh. You see the post and rail fence here? Yeah. Just inside the 50-foot line, there's a line here that says EC, and there's a, a, a leader here that points to it that says. Oh, it's over here. So I notice, you, I notice you've got a 250-gallon oil tank out there. Is uh, I'm assuming that's has to be removed properly and disposed of properly, coordinated Correct. with the fire department, etc. Correct. So it, anything with an oil tank, they'll have to pump it down to remove the, any remnants of oil inside it, and then they'll have to dispose of the tank appropriately. Same thing with the structure. They'll, you know, they'll have to do an asbestos report, a vermin um, report to make sure there's no mice and stuff like that in there before they're allowed to demo it, and then they'll take out anything with mercury or anything like that as far as that stuff before they can actually demo the building. Did you want them to move the erosion control closer to the project, Steve? Um, I think that was just my initial kind of thought. Down by the water line, potential excavation is probably in the correct spot, but if they don't have to excavate, I mean, when are you going to know if you need to dig a new water line all the way out to the street? I think pretty soon. Really, really? I think fairly soon. Uh, the reason the erosion control is shown again where it is now is because that side area to the, to the left of the house is the current backyard for the existing home and they want to continue to utilize that as their yard area. So right now there's a lot of um, uh, overgrowth in that area there when it comes to just shrubs and, and low-lying vines so, and, so, so they want to clear that up. So you're going to pretty much clear down to the erosion control? That The intention is to clean it all up, yeah. If you look at the photo, I didn't take one quite pointing in that direction, but you can see that the ground is covered in uh, just deciduous mat leaves, and mm -hmm. it's just not been maintained, and they just want to be able to clean that up. Where is Beverly Drive? Beverly Drive. If you come out of the out of the parking lot here and you head up the hill, um, it's Lake on the Shore. right. There's a, a road that goes. Um, I forget the name of the road. Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore. Lake Lakeshore oh, Drive. So it's yeah, over. Awful. It's in that watershed for Pentucket. So top right on your map. There's a little locust map, top right, on the plan. Oh, on either yeah. one of them. Kind of tells you what part of the world you're looking at. The size of the lot? The lot itself, currently, if you look at the first page, it is um, currently 40, no, I'm sorry. Well, I don't actually have the current lot size written on here, but if you look at the property lines on the existing condition versus the proposed, you'll see there's a change in the proposed lot line. So part of what we're doing is going to be to alter the proposed, the existing lot line, and the result will be the lot will be 40,000 square feet. Just under an acre. Just, yeah, it meets the zoning requirement, and for a minimum upland area, it meets all that. What Mr. Habib's intention is, um, he, if you look at, again, sheet one, you'll see he's got a really funky lot line that just barely goes around his house, mm -hmm. and he really doesn't have a lot of control, even part of his driveway is off the property, so he wants to change the lot line so his driveway is completely on his property, and so he can pick up oh. all of that wetland in the back and add it to his land so he can maintain control over it, make sure nobody touches it. He, he wants to be owner and responsible for that, so when he sells the house up front when he's done doing the construction, he keeps all that with his house. So the change in the lot will result in a 40,000 square foot lot.
we've taken a copy too. Just uh, I know it's not really pertinent to your decision, but we've taken a copy of this plan yes, and shown it to the building department. And the building inspector has reviewed it for compliance with zoning. And although he didn't have an application and couldn't make a decision, he said everything appeared to, to comply. And he didn't think we'd have any trouble moving that aspect of the project That's forward. The association each. Well, I mean, it, uh, it's essentially improves the situation from our perspective uh, from trying to, again, trying to rebuild this existing property, moves everything mostly outside of uh, jurisdiction. So, mm -hmm. Are there any uh, butters to 12 Beverly Drive? Yes. If you would like to make a comment, you may if you identify yourself for the record. Well, I was... I was uh, showing some pictures of some uh, some salamander species that are fairly rare in the area that breed in that area, but if they're not, if it's not going to affect the wetlands at all, because it's uh, you know, no big deal. Well, it seems like what kind of salamanders? So a few pictures of um, some yellow spotted salamanders. Okay. Oh, thank you. But nothing that would change it in terms of a. In, uh, endangered species. I mean, unless it's actively on the list, given the activity is yep. not impacting the resources, it's yep. not appropriate to kind yep. of bring them in at this hour. Um, yep. I asked the gentleman to send me the pictures just so I can know where they are and get a sense for it and maybe reach out to some of the people to check out the vernal pools in the area for the, the spotted salamanders. But um, it's not as relevant, and that's what we discussed in the hallway. It's not as relevant for this. This doesn't look like there's any potential for a vernal pool but, on this yeah, property. He mentioned, there was, he mentioned there was a lot of them coming through, though, so. Yeah. Well, down we, here, but the, is this off the property? Um, there is a much larger wetland out to the rear of us, which is part of what we're carving off of this lot. Mm -hmm. um, and going much further back on the, uh, the maps that the state has on their website, it did indicate there was some spots out there where there were some certified vernal pools. Nothing up where we are, but much further out. It wouldn't surprise me if those species are migrating around in that area there. It's, it's a large yeah. habitat area. You mentioned there was a lot of them. It wasn't just one. You mentioned that there was another. Yeah, I saw probably a dozen at once. I've never seen more than one ever. That's wonderful. Where were you? I, I am the, uh, on Bradford Loop, so basically on the opposite side of the wetland. Oh, I see. Right. And, uh, so I my guess is that this wetland is in here. This is in here. So there is likely to be migration in here. Is that what you're thinking? Plausible. But, it, you know, it looks like... The, the building footprint is going to be outside of that area. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it, when are you planning to do this work? A month ago. He, okay. he, he, as soon as he gets his, his, he knows he can do what he wants to do. He intends to close on the property immediately. The owner's kind of been pushing to make the closing happen, and this process of making sure he could get his building permit had kind of held it up. So as soon as he knows he's got his water health approval and conservation approval, he's going to go and close on the property and start scheduling for the demo and for the foundation work to be done immediately. So. Any other comments? Uh, I didn't see a motion if anyone would like to make one. I think it meets, meets our requirements. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the NOI 412 Beverly Drive, DEP 161-0863, GCC 2018-10, uh, asking that the applicant work with Steve in the, in the field. And... Uh, Again, I think this is one of these we're not proving any wetlands, any... Okay, you, we don't want to... Um, who drew this up? Okay, not approving the wetland line. Millennium. Okay. You're an engineering company? Civil engineering. You have a wetland scientist draw up this? Yep, top left-hand corner, you'll see there's the, the note there from West Environmental. Okay, um, got it. And, and if you look at the, the topography of the site, I mean, it's very clear. I mean, it's a steep, steep slope. It's right at the bottom. It's yep. just, it can't climb the slope. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a uh, second to approve the notice of intent for 12 Beverly Drive, DEP 161-0862, and the GCC 2018-10. Uh, not accepting the wetland line. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Motion carries. Let's take a motion to close the notice of intent for 12 Beverly Drive. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to close 12 Beverly Drive. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded to uh, close the notice of intent for 12 Beverly Drive. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All abstaining. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Steve, if I could ask, um, if it's not a big deal, when you do the order conditions, if you could let us know, we'll come pick it up rather than certify mail. You can get a, another day or two jump on the closing. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see it being on or after 8.15. I'm going to um, open up a new ANRAD. Thank you. 51 West Main Street, DEP 161-0860. It's a res new resource area delineation. If I could have the applicant, you know, consultant, if you could identify yourself for the record, please. For the record, Mike DeRosa, DeRosa Environmental. John Cullen. John Cullen, Tony. The owner. Needs to shut off his phone. I did, I hit the wrong button. I wonder what that was. Um, we can't hear you back yet. Very oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, fans are distracted. Yeah. And we can't see that either from the back of the So we do have a file number from DP 1610860. And here's the green cards and a better notification. Thank you. Again, for the record, Mike DeRosa, DeRosa Environmental. Um, we prepared the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for, for the property of 51 West Main, uh, just for everyone's um, understanding. This hearing uh, does not include any project. It's just to delineate the boundary of the wetland boundaries right. and establish buffer zones and things. So we delineated uh, the bordering vegetated wetland, which borders on an intermittent stream, which flows into the pond, which is off-site uh, to the north. We have an A series, which comes up to a culvert here, and then a B series, which continues off-site. We show the 50, the 75-foot buffer zones, and the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, and we're just asking the commission to confirm the line as it's shown. And um, we're fully prepared to uh, file for, for any work that's proposed within the buffer zones under a notice of intent and a future, future filing, separate filing. This is just to delineate the boundaries. Steve, we had had a couple conversations with Steve, and he suggested that this may go out for third-party review. That's correct. And so we forwarded uh, everything to Jillian Davies already at BSC, and just trying to keep the project, you know, the process moving. So um, we're willing to do a site walk with the commission. We can meet with Jillian Davies, whatever the commission usually, wishes. Usually we we'll, would like to schedule that post there. The evaluation, obviously, it makes sense, so we can yep. just verify everything, so. It's perfect. I'd entertain a motion to, uh, if someone wants to make one to conduct a third party review for the project at 51 West Main Street. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to. Using BSC, I guess. Um, have a third party review using BFC. BSC, yep. Yeah. Jillian Davies um, to lock down the wetland line. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion, and it's in seconded to to uh, schedule a third-party review for 51 West Main Street with BSC, Julian Davies. And uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. And uh, once that's done, then we can schedule uh, a site walk. So. Since it's open, I will open this up. There's no more questions from commissioners at this point. I will open it up to the public if there are any comments or concerns, if you can identify yourself for the record. Again, this is just the initial uh, determination of the wetland line. We're not talking about any construction or anything at this point. We're only looking at what the resources are and locking down that wetland line. If you just identify yourself with the record, you may Sure, speak. my name is Barbara Angelopoulos. I live on Prospect Street, and I'm about to the wetlands. 
so I know that someone came out and surveyed it um, a while ago and there are poles and flagging. But since there was so much, I've been there for almost 20, 20 years now, 20 years, and they've filled in the wetlands a lot. These, the person that was there prior has filled in with a lot of stuff, so the wetlands has proceeded. There used to be much more wetlands than what was marked off now has evolved and proceeded. So I want to know where you're, there's, you said there's a buffer zone. Where is that buffer zone? Where does it start? Where does it end? And like, the, what is the uh, difference? I can respond to that, Mr. Chairman. The, the tree line is can shown. Can I ask you to move that slightly? I'll turn it yeah. for you. Can you see that? I kind of can, yeah. Not that, thank you. Well, just don't, don't give us some view of it too, yeah, so just yeah, a little bit. You can slide, you can slide the chair over if you want to. That's, that's fine. But essentially, the tree line yeah. is here. Can you guys see? And we, we base the, the wetland boundary both on soils and vegetation. And what side is that tree line on? Is that on the north side? Yep, north is here. So this is the pond. Right. It's probably the easiest thing to go by. Um, so this is the tree line here. And then, as you can see, the wetland line actually comes up into the lawn. Right. Um, so there, we looked at soils, and that, that creeped up. We have a high water table here. That's why that wetland line is away from the pond and away from there. Right. So where's your buffer? Where are you saying your buffer is? The 100 foot buffer is way up here. So we regulate everything within 100 feet of any kind of resource area. Right. We, we can control any kind of activity going on within that area. And this process is we're, we're basically, he's evaluated the property, and we're going to hire our own consultant to go out and verify okay. that data. So if they, if you hire a third party and they decide, like, the wetlands are actually further back or further forward. Then uh, this line will change. Obviously. And then, and then we ultimately vote on that line, making it like a legal line. We lock it in place for three years. So you're not able to build anything or proceed anything near the buffer, or I'm just trying to get an understanding? Uh, well, it means, it means, so it means it's regulated. It means it doesn't, there, we have regulations that do allow some activities within that BVW based on specific setbacks. It's in our regulations, but it's all controlled and regulated. So no one can do anything without, again, filing a notice of intent to go through the legal process within that BVW. Well, with Mr. Chairman, the, may, may I respond? <laughs> I told him not to say that. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm one of, one of the owners of doing the project. And okay. uh, before we did anything with this, we've met with Steve, and who's been very, very helpful to guide us through the process uh, there. So to do this project, you know, the wetlands are going to be uh, cleaned up, redone, and there's actually going to be a, a meadow, again, with the board's approval as we move forward. There'd be a meadow that would be created, then another buffer, so the full 100-foot buffer. So you're going to, if you're concerned about things being built or closer to the water or whatever, that's not going to be the case. That whole property is, uh, with no disrespect, to, is, is in bad shape right now. Right. And it's, there's so much stuff out there. So that's going to be completely, no. <laughs> completely cleaned up, right. and it's going to be completely rebuilt, uh, meaning the, the wetlands and the, the meadow. And, well, we don't, we don't use the term rebuild. We talk about restoration. Thank you. I, I, I Thank we'll you. Rebuild them. We're also getting ahead of the current exactly. way, exactly. way ahead. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. why you this is, this, is why. this is kind of a blank exactly. slate. So so the, re the reason I'm going to talk, no well, you need to stop. There so when, you, when he gets the rebutter, like, I would like to know that information so when you so have the third party out there, so this is that's one, good stuff to know. So this is the first part of a multiple-step process. Yep. Once we lock down the wetland line, they can go away and engineer their bigger picture project with all the details he was just talking about. Right. He'll re-notify abutters, reapply to the commission, and say, we would like to build this here, do this activity, restore over there. But it really has nothing. It, it shouldn't this just, talk about it, this it just allows the them to have like a game plan of what they what they have to work with, basically. So it right. gives them a they have a, a clean slate, and then they say, okay, now we know where things are. Right. Now we can figure out what we want to do with the property. Okay. And so right. we, we kind of really can't get into the, the building aspect of this, of this, this part of the Until you know everything else. Right. We're not even supposed to talk about, you know, what they want to build. I'm not even, I'm not going to ask. It's not okay. part of this process. Yeah. 
That's good. I just wanted to have some information. And we'll also typically schedule a site walk once we get our report back and go physically verify where these lines are. So we can oh, literally okay. take their plan, our plan, look them together, and then say, okay, we agree. This is this is where the line is going to be. We'll vote on that. And when do you think that time frame is from your third party getting your third party? Like, is do you it, guys hire them or does he hire them? We hire them. I mean, this is a pretty straightforward project. Um, I have a contract already. Um, actually, not for this one, a different one. Did you send it to Jillian? I haven't every, heard that. Jillian's got everything. Yeah. So I'll probably have the contract within a week. Um, the commission authorized me to move forward on that. So probably within a month, most okay. of that review will be done. Hopefully before the next meeting on September 20th. But we have a cutoff window when we stop doing this kind of activity in the fall, October 15th. 15th. So we don't do this, this kind of work in the middle of the winter when there's three feet of snow on the ground. Right, right, right. It's really hard to figure out where some of these things are. Right. Perfect. I appreciate you. And uh, as an abutter, you'll, you'll be notified in any future you know, hearings relating to this. Perfect. I appreciate that. Okay, you're welcome. Is uh, there any, we've, we've already uh, voted on the third party. Is there anything else we need to vote? Uh, we can, any other butters? You can, you can speak if you want to, you don't have to, but I give you the option. Sorry, I am If there are no more comments at this point, we can continue this. September 20th at 720, please. September 20th, 7.30? At 20. 7.20. Mr. Chairman, can we continue 51 West Main Street, TEP 161-0860 and GCC 2018-11 to September 20th at 7.20? Second. We have a motion, and it's been seconded to, to continue this uh, NRAD hearing to September 20th at 7.20 p.m. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All abstaining. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks, guys. And moving right along, a couple left, and we'll be done here. It being on after 8.30, I'm going to open up another new NRAD for 554 North Street. DEP 161-08, uh, that is a, another resource area delineation. If I can have the applicant in our consultant, and if you could identify yourself for the record, please. Sure, uh, Greg Hockmuth from Williams and Sparagus. All right. You're representing uh, John Dun Dunleavy for the ANRAD filed for 554 North Street. All right. You guys are running on time. This is great. <laughs> we, yeah, caught, we caught up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Rick, what do we have here? All right, so this lot is almost into Byfield as you're heading down North Street on the left. Okay. There's a very, I don't want to say old house. There's a house here that looks like it's going to blow over any day now. Brown house? Brown and several other colors at this point. Um, the house is beyond repair. Um, our client purchased the property and he's in the process right now of examining the feasibility of some type of a development out here. So the first step in a very long road is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. So he hired us to uh, file that on his behalf and there is a pretty substantial jurisdictional resource area out here that pretty mu much runs the entire length of the westerly property boundary. Um, there's an intermittent stream that comes down to a ponded area. Then according to the USGS map, where the pond empties into a culvert that flows under North Street, from that point down, it's shown as perennial. Which is rather odd, because on the other side of North Street, it drops down about 15 feet to where the channel actually is. 
and I've been out here probably a dozen times now, and it's it's just not flowing. I'm sure it does in the spring, and it does in the fall. Uh, but that's something we might look at with Jillian, is to take a look at that area that's deemed perennial to see if it in fact is. But for now, we're showing it as a river with the associated 200-foot riverfront area, and everything else is shown as BBW. Um, nothing's proposed at this time, uh, just like Mike's application before this one. This is strictly to get the jurisdictional resource areas memorialized. How many acres is that, Prosel? 10? 8.5. 8.5. And it does abut some town of Georgetown land that I believe is open space. Just right. Um, Wells Ave is down here. I know Wells. Yep. yep. And then, of course, the power lines it's back here, the old rail, rail bed. So we did um, put together a package in anticipation, in anticipation of the commission hiring a third party peer review. We did get that out to Jillian probably three or four weeks ago. Um, we're hoping that the commission moves this forward and authorizes Jillian to complete her review. Sorry, did you say this is a pond? So there is a ponded area. I used to skate yeah. on it as a kid. I'm sure, it's, yeah. It's tough to skate on these days. There's a lot of trees that have fallen in and yeah. through eutrophication, it's kind of grown a little bit on the edges, but it's still, for all intents and purposes, a pond. It is. Yep. Okay. Any vernal pool qualities to it? <clears throat> so I'd, I'd be lying to, if I said that I didn't think it could be a vernal pool. Um, I personally didn't see anything when I did my delineation, but that was also in February. So uh, it's something that I, I fully intend on discussing with Jillian, and it may be difficult this time of year to make a definitive, um, you know, to, to look at it that close. Uh, but we may see enough that we could make some assumptions here and, and come up with something that makes sense. Um, I'd be shocked if certain years there weren't obligate species utilizing this area. I think it would be safe to presume it. We well, can write in the right. presumption that it is. I think uh, regulations address it that way anyway. We do. We would assume that I mean, that's why I'm pretty we much bringing it up. I think even if it's just labeled presumed to be, and if you want to argue it later during the right season, sure. at this point, given the time of the year, I think it's fair to assume it is. Yeah. And it definitely holds water long enough. I'd be shocked if there were adult fish populations in there. Uh, part of the reason is just the drop off that goes down to where the true perennial stream is. They'd have a hard time getting up that hill. Sounds pretty isolated. Flying fish. That's right. But pretty straightforward. I mean, the line does creep up quite a bit in these, these two spots. If you walked out there in the winter, you wouldn't think that's a wetland. But once spring hit it, it definitely was. So this wetland line here, the A series, does this mark the edge of the ponding area too? No, it doesn't. Um, if if I was to draw that in, it would pretty much be from A44 to A52. Right. And and everything upgrading that is is BBW bordering on an intermittent stream that flows down. It probably drops, I'd say maybe 10 feet from here down to the pond. So when did you do your delineation out there? Uh, we did it in February, and then we went back again and tightened things up in the spring. This is dated July, so that's just when you printed the plan. So we had we did the, deline the delineation, then our surveyors went out and located our flags, and then we put the plan together. And um, we've done some other work too while this was going on, some sketches and feasibility studies for the client. So when did you go out and confirm your flags other than February? In the spring. We went out in the spring. Like? Yeah, once, well, once everything started growing, once we're into the growing season. April, May? Um, Probably got to be in April if you're maybe talking April. about the growing season. Yeah. And we've been out here several so times since then. Mark before March 15th. I'm sorry? Nothing. Okay. Well, I, um, I guess at this point we, we might as well have uh, uh, a motion to uh, schedule a third party review. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we engage VSC for a third party review of five of the NRAD four 
554 North Street, which is DEP, uh, ooh, that's one, a bit of a funny DEP number. One, six, one, one, one. Has a minute. Sorry? Use, I haven't seen any issue. It hasn't been issued, not yet. Oh, okay. It yeah, hasn't been issued yet. A mistake here. Okay, GCC 2018-13. Second. We have a motion and it's being seconded to conduct a third party review uh, by BSC on 554 North Street, GCC 2018-13. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Are there any abutters to 554 North Street? Yes. You would like to make a comment? You may if you identify yourself for the record. Um. Do I have to introduce myself as to who I am? Yes. No. Okay, Andrew Clark, doesn't, I'm at 13 Walls Ave. It doesn't, doesn't hurt, we just do that so, you know, in the future we can go back and look and see who made what comment. Yeah, that's fine. So you're back here. Yeah, we, uh, we're we we're direct to butter at the, probably the shortest section of the property line at the back. I guess my question is, and maybe this is, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the process, so I don't know if the third party reviewer would address this issue, but, you mentioned that you did your initial delineation in February. I don't think you indicated exactly when you firmed up those locations. You indicated in the spring. Um, what month was that? It really doesn't matter. I mean, we. No, from, from the, his perspective, it doesn't matter. It more matters what, what our folks do. So, whatever he does, we're hiring another consultant working with the town who's going to go verify. And if it's not, they don't agree, we'll change the. So this is addressed in that third party. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I wanted to. Yeah. Check. That's why. That's why we do that. So, you know, the, the the owner hires their own consultant, and we hire a consultant to verify what they do. And that verification occurs during within within the, the growing season. Cuts off October fifth, April fifteenth to October fifteenth. So we do it when we know we're likely to find something. Okay. And again, at this process, we're just looking at where the wetlands are. We're not talking about what anyone wants to do with the land. This is just kind of an exploratory. They want to find out where the wetlands are. We uh, lock them down for three years. This is where it is. And they can do what they want with that information. And I, I do want to uh, point out, too, we are going to be taking pictures over the next week or so of that dry stream channel and the way the regs are written. Um, it needs to be documented by a credible source. So it may be worthwhile if commission members wanted to see it for themselves. Uh, we are going to bring a newspaper with us so you can see the date the photos were taken. Uh, but we fully intend on trying to document that so we can get the resource area boundaries accurate. Can I, um, can I ask a question how that, I mean, it's relevant to a point. If, the, if that resource is a vernal pool, that setback is, well, if it's not a river, we wouldn't have a riverfront area. Got it. Okay. You know what I mean? And it's it's and just it one less hurdle to go through if something is ultimately proposed out here. And I do think USGS got it wrong. I do think the perennial stream does start on the other side of North Street, but it would make more sense for it to stop at the start at the bottom of the hill where it actually flows and doesn't dry up. Right. You'll see what I mean when you go out there. It's, yeah. it's a pretty good drop from that culvert. I've seen it. It's functioning more like a detention pond with an outlet control structure, which is a pipe. And also, once once our third party reviews and we look at this, the line, we'll typically go out and do a site walk. The commission will go out and look at the information and say, okay, we agree with this. And we vote on it. So it's a process. Great. So I'm assuming you used soils when you placed your flags. I did, yeah. In February. I've been doing this a long time. I'm sure you have. <laughs> and you can flag year-round uh, just because this commission has a seasonal shutdown. Well, we, um, we, we do it just, I, I understand that. You know, I just, in my early days, from people asking me to go out to dig three feet down in the snow and pulling out a twig and saying, that's a blueberry bush, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and you'll see when you get out here, it's not pretty straightforward. Okay. It just, you know, we, we've actually had um, some major mistakes, not by the commission, but actually by applicants, uh, their consultants, you know, after spring happens, they find out they actually missed 
oh, yeah. a vernal pool or, or an isolated wetlands because it's been under three feet of snow. And it's like when it melts, it's like, oh, I didn't see this. It's like right in the middle of the property. Jillian's not going to miss anything out here. That's why we ask her. So, again, yeah, you, you know, you're, you're, you're welcome to do the delineations when you want to do them. So what right. works for your applica applicant, so. And also, just for the abutters kind of um, information, eventually, if and when they propose a project, you'll get re-notified for that discussion. This is just for this. In, in a couple of months to whenever they decide to do it, you'll get re-notified for any proposed activity if and when it happens. Thank you. Welcome. I'll obtain a motion to continue. Mr. Chairman, let's continue. 554 North Street, GCC 2018-13 to September 20th at 725. left. 725. Really? Okay. Um, 725. We're stacking them up. Like some planes of, overloaded. Some of them might not be ready. We might get recontinued, so I don't want to give them 45 minutes. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded to continue the interad for 554 North Street to September 20th at 7.25 p.m. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining? Thank you. Thank Welcome. You. And one more and then we can finish up our discussions here. It being on after 8.45, are we there yet? Yeah, we're just there. 8.45, I'm going to open up a new notice of intent for 134 Central Street, DEP 161-08. That's a septic system upgrade, a portion of which is within the buffer zone to a DVW. I didn't have the applicant and or consultant, and if you could identify yourself on the record. Before we even get started, I have to explain. I'm in a butter. Okay. So motioned. So just for, to clarify, Rachel, you have standing because you're in the butter. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. So noted, I should say noted. <laughs> okay. All right. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. For the record, my name is Jim Scanlon. I'm here on behalf of Beth and George Bernard at 134 Central Street. Uh, we filed a notice of intent as part of a septic system upgrade. Um, the property has an existing three bedroom dwelling with a septic system that is in failure. Uh, there are wetlands located here in the green with a 50 foot and 100 foot buffer zone. As you can see, the proposed septic system upgrade is entirely outside of the 100 foot buffer zone, um, very close to it, um, but there will be some uh, associated grading as well as the uh, filling uh, and or removal of That's, That was the my existing. question about the existing system yep. closure. Yep. Uh, the existing system is a septic tank located right here with a leach pit shown in the, I guess the purple. Uh, uh, is that a standard system? Any? Uh, it's a Presby. Presby. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we want to make it a little bit longer, thinner, and that's yes, kind of why I ask because it just the, the, the configuration I thought it might be. Yeah, it is a, a Presby uh, Enviro septic pipe. Has the Board of Health approved? I believe the Board of Health has approved. All right, Steve, any Sir. comments? No. Pretty straightforward. Yep. Replacement. It's a very restricted property. This is the best they can do. Could you just show where the 100 foot is again on there? The 100 foot runs it right. skirts right under it. Okay. Right, uh, right against the uh, uh, five foot soil over deck right. or soil replacement area. So it is actually pretty much outside. Yeah. So, so the, from that perspective, it's an improvement because yes. it basically gets it outside of uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. You said the system is in failure, correct? It is. They had a Title V down there uh, selling. So. Mm -hmm. 
sorry. They had a Title V done. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, they're selling. Selling. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. yep. They had a Title V inspection done. I was one of those new seller septic tanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save space. Make the sorry. septic under the house. <laughs> Trying to pay attention. Well, I get you know, g given the size of the property, given the fact that it it, it actually improves the system by moving it outside of the jurisdiction, it is an improvement. And we have it was a DEP number, correct? Yeah, we do. No comments from DEP or anything? No. No, no comments from the DEP. Where do they? <laughs> There. There's a link, so you click on the uh, comments, yes, yeah. and it opens up below it. If there are comments. If there are comments. Okay, because I, I, I remember you saying at the last meeting on another project, and I started I clicking, and nothing would click. So. Yeah. So if there are comments. Oh, okay. It's kind of like a surprise. You click yeah. and <laughs> see if you can get a prize. <laughs> They've only commented once in probably 15 here, 15 projects, so it's not very common. Um. Any more comments from commissioners? It seems pretty straightforward. I know I'm abstaining, but I really don't want her to move. <laughs> no denying. Yeah. So noted, but we can't we can't talk about we things are like that. In that can't respect. deny it for that reason. <laughs> no. I'll take a motion if no one has any other. Mr. Chairman, I. Like oh, first, first, let me, first let me oh. Are there any butters out for 134 Central Street? Negative. Okay, so Mr. Noted. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the NOI for 134 Central Street, DEP 1610864, oh, GCC 2018-14. Second. We have a motion and seconded to approve the uh, notice of intent for 134 Central Street, DEP 161-0864. And, and did you get green card, Steve? I did. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All, oppo all opposed? All abstaining? Yes. Motion carries. I'll obtain a motion to close the um, notice of intent for 134 Central Street. Mr. Chairman, let's close 134 Central Street. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded to close 134 Central Street. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? All, all abstaining? Yeah. One abstention. Thank so you. Noted. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And uh, last but not least, sorry to keep you gentlemen waiting. All right. So what yeah, right. We figured we could <laughs> knock some of these out and be on oh, time been and, here for hours. And, and not have to uh, try to <clears throat> hasten the discussion without talking because we had 12 people hanging around. So we have our EO discussion, 47 West Street. And um, all right. So this is a project that has lasted longer than some people's lifetimes. And I understand you want to close it out. And um, I guess we would like to too, but I think, you know, from my perspective, we would like to ensure that we've captured everything in terms of all the activities that have gone on over that period of time, just so we don't miss, it, miss anything, almost like in a, a punch list fashion that we, you know, We've had numerous EOs just so what, that we capture this information and we say, yep, that's been done, that's been done, that's been done, and uh, then we could bring this to fruition. So I think that's the only sane way to do this, as opposed to just saying, yep, it's closed. That, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the record, Paul Havity, Blatton, and Bobrowski, and Havity representing the applicant um, with me tonight is Rich Morello. Um, my understanding of what was left to be completed was uh, really relating to the restoring of the grades that were in existence prior um, to the remediation work being done, um, and that we have submitted copies of conservation minutes from 2014 to 2015 um, that talk about the fact that some of this 
would be addressed through the submittal of a new notice of intent. Um, a new notice of intent was submitted in 2016, but that never really went anywhere because of disagreement as to what was supposed to be done and whether or not um, those grades would be restored. Um, so that's sort of languishing right now um, on a superseding order with the DEP because their position is they don't have any jurisdiction over the enforcement order, um, and therefore we need to get that resolved before we can actually move forward with that appeal. So what we would like to do is either get that enforcement order closed out with the requirement that we restore the grades as was previously required per the plans that were submitted and reviewed by this commission, or you know, through an order that says we're just done and things will be left the same, in which case we'll have to go back and, and review how we're going to move forward with our project based upon the new wetland lines. Right, I, I understand. I think, you know, from my perspective, we're, we're just trying to have a reckoning of everything that went on in the sense that we that we know that everything is ready to close. I mean, and it, there's been a lot of activity um, long before you were on this case. Again, 15 long, plus before years. I was, before I was done with law school. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I've got a reasonably good memory, but, you know, I, I can't remember everything that happened over 15 years. So we just, you know, I'm not, again, we're not opposed to closing it out. We just want to make sure we captured everything. And again, we said, yep, that's all been done. That's been done. Uh, and, and I guess what, I, what I'm forward. saying is the 2015 minutes seem to indicate that that's the case, um, other than the work that would need to have been completed through the submittal of the new notice of intent. I'm not aware of anything else that is necessary. I don't know what your process would be like to establish that punch list, if you will. Um, so any thoughts you have, certainly we're happy to listen to. Well, I mean, first first off, I'd like to go back and, and, from, and, and, and just look at the different EOs that we had over the years and just kind of, you know, bulletize them and say, you know, these are the EOs and these are the items that were completed. So we just know that we didn't have any glaring gaps in, in activities that were supposed to occur. As, again, if this was a short process, you'd be like, yeah, not a, not a big deal. But with with literally, you know, many, many commissioners involved over the years, and I'm probably the only one that was involved from from the initial get-go um, 15 years ago, or actually longer. So I don't remember everything that we did along the way at this point. Again, I'd have to go back and, and you know, look at a lot of things, too. So I guess we need a, we need a mechanism to kind of come to that state. So I just... I, I haven't really gone into the EO because I wanted to wait for this discussion before I went and really started sifting through stuff, but I spent some time today. I counted 14 enforcement orders since 2004. Um, and keep in mind, at the time, the, the mechanism for working on this project was through enforcement orders. So every From month or so, they write a new enforcement order to help manage the project for the next six months. Because right from the start, the enforcement or, uh, the, the order of conditions was not followed. And so right away it went from, into enforcement From literally day action. one. Um, the previous agent did a few, when he wrote his enforcement orders, he did a kind of follow-up memo. So I pulled the first two. So this one's from July 20th, 2004, and July 22nd, 2004. And at, you know, at one part of it, he references kind of the fines that accrued as part of this one particular action item. Um, so for between these two, there's over $2,000 worth of fines that are referenced in this that have never been paid. Um, to remove an enforcement order, it's $250 per enforcement order. Um, a lot of the following enforcement orders reference a lot of more technical data that I don't have or I can't find. Historically, the applicants mentioned that all the data was sent to the commission. You have it, you have it. Um, so I've been hearing that for years. I have to correct that just for the record. Everything is sent to the DEP 21E folks because they're the ones that actually oversee the 21E cleanup. A lot of the data I don't have. So a lot of the conditions were groundwater sampling to be done yearly. Um, I don't believe it was done. During the open hearings, it was mentioned that a lot of those samples weren't done. But at the end, it was done once, and they came up clean. Enforcement orders, you go through these bulletized. Requirement, sampling every year. Was it done or not? I don't know, because I don't have the data. So this is a very complicated 14 enforcement orders, lots of technical data. It is massive to go through. Now these two I have here are a little easier, because they were early on, and the issues were no DEP sign, um, no notification, really basic stuff that I can, I can do that math. Um, 
So in, very, in other words, quickly, what I think technical what skills might I suggest well. is is you know you pro we can provide what we know. If we have gaps, we we may need information from you so we can again collate everything and say, yep, this we're all done. So if we say, gee, I don't have that report, if you can provide that stuff in, in specific cases, fill in the gaps. Then we can. Let me ask you a question. Sure. You're issuing an EO. Why would you keep issuing more? Because things changed. An EO, in other words, we issue an EO. Right. Maybe six months from now, something changes on right. site, another one gets issued. Don't you modify that EO? You can do it different ways. So Again, what happens to the, there's 14, which I don't believe that's true. But what happens to, where are all the 14? Do you have them? Get us a copy of all of them. the first two. I have the, I have the two that I think are act, were active. I mean, I can email you them. Um, yeah, I'd like I to see them all. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's public <laughs> right. record. I mean, right. we're not trying to hide anything. No, we just, no. again, from, from both perspectives, right. we're trying right. to figure out kind of, you know, where yeah. everything is and say, yeah, I'd love to have like a spreadsheet that just had everything listed. Yeah. We could just say, yeah. yep, 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 everything's good, good to go. And yeah, it's, but it's, it's kind it's, of like confusing because there's been so many people involved, so many LSPs involved, so many attorneys involved, all, you know, even in so many applicants involved over the years. It's just, it, it's, it's difficult to just say, yeah, everything's great. I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to yeah. trying to work to get to that point. It's just a little more, a little more challenging to say, yeah, we know definitively. A, a different project I could figure it out in a few hours and calculate it. Well, let, and let's and assume we get you all the information. Who's going to remember it? Well, then you guys. Like they haven't been here. But, you know I mean? but if we have it in like one place as like yeah. one report, yeah. yeah, we finally put all the papers in one pile. So someone has to compile all of what the enforcement tours say and then data mine to find out when the sampling was done next to that item. Sampling yearly here. Here's the data supporting the sampling was done, or sampling was only done every third year or every other year. Someone has to data mine to find all that, and we don't have all the data, and it's not something that you can do in 10 minutes just looking through one form. Like, this is 15 plus years of data, and. I mean, it's a really unusual case in that sense that, you know, you just don't find cases. Like, it just never ends. Well, we want it to end, too. So I don't I believe that, but that's all right. Well, I mean, I'd, I'm sure I'd rather be doing things other than sitting here, yeah. you know, talking about this. Uh. So, so, can I give you a copy of all the minutes we broke down? This is from your minutes, you guys. Kind of states that if we close those NOIs, you agreed to close the Yeah, EO. again, if we closed, right. if we closed. We did close the NOIs, and we opened another one in 16. Thank you. I do, thank you. Yep, more copies are always good, though. Yep. Did, did you drop that? I didn't drop that. That was there. there. Okay. <coughs> so I, I looked into the minutes referenced. Um, Got them right off your website. Yep. Yep. I mean, the commission references that we're, we, you know, we'll close these out. We are doing that right now. There's a process procedure to closing them out. You just don't say, we'll close it out. If these steps happen, we can work through the process of closing it out. So I think the... And again, I'm not opposed to closing them out. I just want to make sure that we have right, but encompassed everything. That and, and that's fine. I mean, I, I certainly am, am not going to say that you shouldn't make sure that everything's been completed. But my understanding is that DEP has already signed off. They're satisfied that the remediation was completed. 2012. So um, I guess I'm not sure what's left in terms of concerns for the town. So if you say, well, there wasn't, you know, three years of testing done from 2007 to 2010, yeah, DEP, at this point, does it matter anymore? Well, DEP was handling the hazardous waste and we were handling the wetlands. And again, two different parts of DEP are dealing with here. Sure. So we, we were dealing with the other part of it. Do we have a list of the 14 and EOs and what was actually detailed in them? No. I have 14 EOs on the computer. They're, you know, the attachments are, you know, 15-page documents that kind of cross-reference each other in this kind of crazy web. So creating an action item list, like Carl just mentioned, is it's a project. It's a long project. It's not just, here's the four conditions. Because the attachments from 2004, just reading them, a couple of times they make it really obvious, per these conditions that were not done, over this many days, the fine is X. Those are nice and clean. There's not many of those. 
So we need someone to go through all of them and, and do that cross-referencing. And, and a lot of the data I don't have. So sampling, was it done or not? Um, and I guess to answer a question that was just asked, what does it matter the project's over? It absolutely matters because to close it out in every single enforcement action, every case, determining kind of compliance with it is part of the, the process. If just because a project done doesn't mean that, you know, pro the, the Apple can't be held accountable for aspects that weren't done properly. I've never read some of these 2014, um, 2004 applica um, attachments. It references that the truck, all the equipment was brought out, piled up, and oil was flowing out into the wetlands. Now that's an, that's an, a findable act. Now, just because none of us were there doesn't mean it, it, a fine shouldn't be levied for that one incident. Um, again, well, that's what that first no EO was for. <laughs> and, and so there's, there's language in the 2015 minutes that specifically state um, <clears throat> that we have issued some fines, um, some fines were paid, some fines were waived. Mm -hmm. So without more specific information, I don't really, I mean, if something happened in 2004 and it was serious enough to impose fines, I presume they were either paid or that they were cleaned up and, and the fine was waived. Well, it was a period where communication was kind of difficult. No, you know, there wasn't a lot of communication between uh, the applicant and the commission. I find it hard to believe that if there was a fine due, you wouldn't have made me pay. No, we, we, don't, we don't levy fines to the end, to the end of the discussion. Everything's done and resolved. That's when the commission... Well, not according to your minutes, yeah. Yeah, you're, again, you can interpret the minutes. Sure. The says, I know we've given fines, they've paid fines, right. and we've forgiven <laughs> fines. There's not really much more information yeah, but if you than take that. that. If you take that out of context, I think Carl was yeah. referencing, that's how we deal with these in a general sense. You can't close an enforcement action just by saying with a wand, okay, enforcement order is done. Every fine and the regs and the fee you know, schedule. Those are, those are qualitative statements. I, I would like to have quantitative statements of what the accounting of you know, what, what occurred. Really, that, that's, that's, what I, that's what I would like to see to say everything's been accounted for. That's my only concern. I guess I, I have concerns with whether or not the record keeping is sufficient to actually make that accounting from what I'm hearing tonight. And, and what I don't want is for my clients to have to be responsible for every statement that's seen where it says a fine is being levied and then there's no record as to whether it was paid, whether it was forgiven, or whether it's still due. We have, we have great record keeping on fines that have been collected. To my knowledge, no, you know, we haven't collected fines because we're waiting for the process to come to, you know, to, come to the end. I, we also have no clue what's in these EOs, whether they've been settled, whether they're currently worth stressing about or not. There might be parts so that you say, don't worry about it. Exactly. Some of them might be, who cares? Moving on. I mean, right. this is a five, two five-page documents. I'd say half of this that I just looked through real quickly before the meeting, I wouldn't even blink. Just whatever. It goes away. Not a big deal. And I think so water, a lot that of that happen. is just water under the bridge, too. Correct. A truck that was leaking oil 14 years ago, that's nothing we can be involved with now. Unless it wasn't aggressive. Well, well we get, when we did all the cleanup, but in which case we DDP paid them would have signed off that right. the right. site had been cleaned up. We have no proof. We have no way to assess the actual damage. No one, we have no way of knowing what what actually happened and what the um, remedy or, but, or... But essentially what I'm talking about is, is that could be addressed in like a, like a report. In other words, EO, these issues... Exactly. Um, but know, we need to know. Not applicable, this is applicable, this is applicable. Exactly. But you need to know what all the EOs, EOs are. We need a list okay. of... EO number one, two, right, three, four, right. five. This and that is should what come from was. you guys. You have all the EOs. That's, did oh. you say that the DEP 21E people were involved with the EOs? I mean, no, they're not. No. 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 A lot of the, the data that's collected and reported goes to the DEP. It did so, not always, there was, there's was. there been three you, or four you, LSPs involved. Gentlemen have the files right. that you had sent, the DEP copies of the files that you had it's sent. It's on the computer, yeah, it's on the computer. I don't. I wasn't involved. In yeah, that. I have no. no, none of that. Well, you should have the copy. Don't look at me. No. Shouldn't you guys have the EOs somewhere? Some of the EOs. Yes. Yeah. The thing the we don't have. Is, I think what Steve's saying is that you haven't re necessarily received all of the information because some of it went directly to DEP right. and didn't go right. to you. So some of that information may actually be responsive 
to issues that are addressed in the EO, but you never it actually received it possibly. Yeah, again, there's, there's a lot of information that has to be dealt through, and that's not a 20 minute, you know, there's many parties going to have to be involved, whether it's DP, whether it's an LSP, kind of to determine what was done and fill so in the So we need someone who kind of knows the system, mm -hmm. who knows who to go to for, and who can put together this information mm -hmm. for us. Maybe I'm curious we where should you're going with hire, that. <laughs> pardon? Right. I'm curious Maybe where you're heading should for should hire someone, this is kind because of called, I don't believe uh, you have time to do that, This is kind that, of called a gap analysis. Right? Yeah, right, we need a gap uh, analysis. License so basically you figure out what you're missing. So a, a but we need right. to see it to I know agree. we're missing. Exactly. Then we can answer it, answer it, answer it. For you and us. Right. So we can get so, you copies of the EOs. Yep. And then can you can provide us someone? with, with you know, if you have copies of the, the DEP information, I mean, hopefully uh, together we can say, yeah, we've, we've got everything we need. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to, I'd like to really bring this to fruition here. Yes. Everyone would. But because the next step is actually, you know, addressing some of the issues that we need to address. The stormwater management, all that sort of thing. We need to put all of this old stuff behind us so we can move forward and actually... Develop it. Do, develop. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> address the issues that need addressing. Keep in mind that we're, we've been taking, the commission denied this project and it got it brought to the right. DEP for superseding. Right. So you guys are not addressing any issues. That's right. The we state, just need to get the EO signed off. The state is. Right. Hopefully I, I, those issues, they can't be addressed by anyone. So, so the way DEP the EO is addressed forward. is going to directly impact <clears throat> how this project moves forward. So if the EO is addressed by seeing we've got to close out all these other items and one of those items being you were supposed to bring the grades back to the pre-existing condition, then we're moving in one direction. If the EO says the plans showed those grades being changed but we don't want you to do that now, therefore we're going to close out the EO without addressing that, then we have to move in a different direction and that would likely mean dropping the superseding order appeal and filing a new um, notice of intent after we have gone back and looked at how we can redo the development to work with what we have left. So I mean, it would, it would seem that I get it. you need to get, we need to get them copies of those EOs, and then you need to kind of address and say like, yeah, we've done that, nope, this One, is not two, done. One, two, three, right. Okay. So I want to clarify something. I've heard multiple times this mentioned about the grades. That has nothing to do with the enforcement orders. It was never mentioned, it was never discussed in any enforcement order. It was mentioned in the notice of intent for the development. The commission determined that the existing grades on the property are what we're going to work with. The applicant argued that the old ones and it needs to be restored. So I'm hearing that the commission said restore it. The commission said do not restore it to the original grades. Wetlands are what they are. They've evolved over time and they are what they I are. That so yeah. that is yep. not going to, if, if that's the outcome that we're, we're being asked that that's a big part of this discussion. You're not going to get that answer out of this discussion. The enforcement so, order has nothing to do So my to do understanding that. is that the plans that were part of that whole process mm -hmm. showed that at the end of the process that there would be a regrading back to the original. There was a reference early, early on, 15, you know. That was part of the cleanup stuff. 2007. Right. Yeah. Right. You guys, during the hearing, that was the argument at the time. During the, the hearing process, didn't agree. the, the, um, the wetland scientists asked us whether the commission wanted to restore it to the original or mm -hmm. whether we wanted the existing conditions After as site. part of the hearing. Right. You know, a third party reviewer was, agreed with the commission. So it wasn't a, it, that discussion's over and done. The commission right. said, we're going with the existing grades. That's not going to change. Because it had been so many process. years. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not going to change the process. The, you would have had to destroy the wetlands that have grown in certain locations for 15 years to kind of build new ones again. And, and that's fine. If that's what the commission's ultimate determination is with regards to releasing the EOs, then we will do what we need to do to do the development on the land that's available. And that's fine. So likely what we will do is withdraw the appeal with DEP um, because this has been held up at DEP while we've been trying to figure out how to get the, um, executive, the enforcement orders rescinded because they said that they don't have any jurisdiction to act until those orders have been rescinded. So once the, once they are rescinded. Have you heard that from it, from Steve? Oh, that was, we had a meeting. We, we with had all a of private them. meeting. Yeah. 
Yeah, but we, they haven't communicated that to us, so. Well, they communicated to us that right. you need to go back to, DEP, to back to the Conservation Commission and get this matter resolved, and until then, we can't move forward on the superseding order because that's not something within our jurisdiction. So I wasn't for that, orders. but it almost doesn't matter. You're asking us to close out the EOs. We'll work with you to close out the EOs. That's and, pretty straightforward. So, I mean, and then, and presuming that we get to the end of that process, and the grades are as, as they are right now, then we've got less area which we can work to do the project, and we'll have to go back to the Board of Appeals, get a modification of the project to work within the area that we have available. And so, that, so there'll be no need to move forward with the superseding order that's currently pending. We'll be back in front of you with a new notice of intent based upon the wetland lines, you know, as delineated last time up. Hopefully by then the EOs will all be closed out and it's a fresh start to move forward with a new notice of intent for a project that might look a little different than what we saw before. Correct. So can, can you send him copies of Absolutely. the EOs that we have? They can only send can kind of look at and, and two or three you at a time. Okay. Work with Steve and say, you know, this has been done, this has been yep. done. Yeah. It's yeah. Missing. In other words, some evidence, or if you've got the report, right. to say, see right. report, appendix, we and need whatever. need it to stop. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to push this forward. Yep. I, understand yep. you, I understand what you need to do, and I, 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 I you know, know we need to move this forward. I don't yep. want to keep it open forever either, yep. but it's kind of like you have to have a starting point here. And it really doesn't make sense. Yeah, everything's good. No, give us those EOs or, and we'll stop. Or you, or you can't say, it's in there. We gave it to yeah. you. It's not, a, it's not a bowl yeah. of soup. You can't just say, it's in there. We need to kind of say quantitatively, yep, it's all been addressed, or we're missing these gaps, yep. and we need to figure out what to do with those specific missing items. Those will go out first thing Monday morning. And, and my only comment on that is, and I think it has been discussed, there, there almost certainly will be things, issues, whatever, within those enforcement orders that just don't matter anymore. We can you know, agree with Steve. You, know, you put up a that. sign and you right. didn't put right. the sign up, right. but there's no evidence you yeah. put up the sign up. What difference does it make now? Right, so ultimately what the goal should be is to make sure that the site is as it should be before we move forward to the next step. I mean, it, you know, obviously if it would be a six month or a year process, it wouldn't be such a traumatic issue for right. anyone, but because of the, the time frame involved, it's, it's a lot harder you know, to, it's, it's a lot harder to grasp, it's a lot harder to get back what, you know, what was or what was not submitted. Um, but there's, there's definitely going to be some things, and I've never seen one of these enforcement orders, but I can guarantee there's going to be things in there that just can't matter 15 years later. There may be things that still do matter. And there may, and that's what yeah, we, that's need, right. to, and that's what we need to ascertain. To deal with right. them. Right. We'll create categories, I'm thinking, right. like some that right. don't really matter. But, for example, the ones where like the agent pretty much said, you know, on this date, the fines have accrued to X. I mean... There's going to be categories I think that need to be evaluated and weight yes. given to them. Every, Maybe yes. half of them just go away. I think I'm away. the only person, even not including you, that has been involved in this from the very beginning. Right. You weren't here in the very no, beginning. No, I come in no fall. No one else has. So you have different agents, you have different commissioners, you have different owners, you have different attorneys. So you should remember everything. I, I, <laughs> I know yeah, that's, right. that's, so, I mean, it's, it's very challenging. And again, I've been involved in it from the get-go because so, so much has occurred over that time. But it's been so long since anything's been done right, that right. ultimately I think we just really need to focus on uh, is there anything that needs to be done on the site to make sure it's anything in the condition it needs to be significant before we move right. forward. And I don't, you know, I mean, it is important, too, that if, you know, if we were supposed to do sampling and just kind of blew off sampling for umpteen years and, you know, that, that is, that is yeah. kind of important, too. Yeah. Well, that come back, and we did it again, and we did it again. So I think I, I have documentation that that's been done. Great. The piece of land we're given in the back, we did it one more time, clean. And it, it mentions it in a minute. So. I mean, this, this whole thing started you know, wrong from the very get-go. You know how it started literally, wrong? Literally, we had an order of conditions, and, and literally within like three days of it being issued, the original uh, You remember how it started? Ted. I, I do remember. Yeah, he's supposed to, his deal was to remove the cars when we bought the property. Mm -hmm. But there was a there was an order how to do it. You had to build a pad, do the. On a Saturday, he decides to move 300 cars. Nobody knows what's going on. Saturday, no. Oh. So and that's how it started. Bad from the get go. And that was from the guy who bought it from. Right. He started the whole thing. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. 
but you know it's a long road and hopefully we're we just about there yeah so steve monday you can get it. okay first thing all right it's gonna be in like 10 emails just because i can't right. I can. and if you if you gentlemen have you know data that you sent to dep that you have copies of that'll help us too to kind of yeah. well i think that's we'll, we'll go through yeah these orders and, and look Once exactly I see, what yeah, supposed then to we can submitted. kind of put them together. Is this, is that, is that. Again, you've got multiple agencies involved, multiple people, Tell multiple attorneys, it. multiple consultants, multiple owners. You know the easiest one out of all this? The DEP. Because they're so redundant with everything. Well, they really are. I mean, you've got LSPs. You give one, well, I mean, oh, yeah. The original this LSP, his, his methodology, he said, I walked around the site and if I smelled oil or saw a stain <laughs> on the ground, I sampled. <laughs> Like, really? Yeah. Well, the DP must have been happy with one of them because they signed off. <laughs> and we spent a ton of money moving dirt. Steve, do you have my email address? Uh, I do. I got it. I'll send it to you. I have it. Apparently, I'm on So, you know. Do you want me to CC you on all the emails? Please. Yeah. We're not trying to be difficult. We no. just want to be. A, we just we want just to thorough. develop the property and move we'll forward and do it right and be done with it. Anyone have any? And then you won't have to comments? see us anymore. Any yeah. Comments? <laughs> right. No. This uh, long process. No. Once we have that list, I can go to work. Admit, Steve might have half of the information too. Yeah, I, I between have, the two of us, I have, we'll have it. I have a lot of it. I just right. wanted to be on the record that I don't have it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. so that it doesn't later say, Steve, you said you had everything. I don't uh, have everything. And right. again, again, because of multiple personalities. We understand. Thing. Yeah. But between us, we should be able to lock it down. I agree. That's it. Okay. All right, folks. Go home and watch the Patriots. Oh, it's done. All right. Gentlemen, you guys have, have a good night. Thank you. All right. See you later. Thank you for waiting. All right. Yeah, we apologize for the delay. So we have all right. bills. Carl, um, okay. camp, all Camp Denison this month, totaling $1,000. Um, two electric bills for $300 plus. Dollars. Um, propane, $265. Alarm system, $250, and about $200 for material for building projects. That is all the bills we have this month. Those were all Camp Den? All Camp Denison. So total is $1,047.21. And motion? Oh, can we pay the bill? Uh, make, a motion, make a motion. We pay the bills. It's rigged by Steve. Second. We have a motion, and it's been seconded to pay the bills as read by Steve. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All abstaining. I have a bunch of docs to sign. This is certification of compliance for 12 Hickory Lane. It's a se older septic system. Another old one. This is a 14 Hillside Drive certification of compliance. This is actually for the... It's also um, a, a house construction and septic system. Both done. North Street, 360 North Street, this is the RDA that you approved tonight. Five Bella Woods, this is the order of conditions you guys approved tonight. I'm just having a fan. 12 Beverly Drive, this is the order of conditions you guys approved tonight. And 134 Central Street, this is the septic system that you guys approved tonight. Do we have to make the No, it's just an administrative act. <clears throat> um, so I'm the one if it comes for you, the one that you're about to. All right. This is an extension, board, um, an extension for the order of conditions at Newton's for their little project. Oh, just getting yeah. ahead of it. Golf, the, the, uh, the mini golf and there's a uh, structure and some storm water. They're still in progress. It, it's cleaner. Orders never really expire as long as they're in well, the is, act. Is, is, that, is that act, is that automatic extension act, did that expire? It did. Um, the, the, the thing with the, the economy was bad. Correct. The thing with the extensions is as long as the person's actively working on it, the orders are good for three years and you can have a three year extension. Right. If they're actively working on it, legitimately working on it, they kind of never expire within reason. Um, I think it's cleaner to do extensions. So the gentleman came in for a building permit sign off on, a, and I asked him if he would request an extension. So I think it's just a cleaner and cleaner way to do it. I'm also passing around. These are, I've had you sign order of conditions for the occasional one that you guys miss signing, which actually happens more often than I realized. So the last meeting, 
one person forgot to sign one of the order conditions, and I had to bring it over to the police department. Um, that also happened on one of the certification of appliances. So we've always done order of conditions in that way. These are a few blank COCs. So if in the future, if a commissioner missed signing something. So this is just one packet. Just flip through it, and there's probably 15 um, copies of it. Do we need to sign all 15? Yes, please. Well, there's because there's local and state. So there's a couple of different forms, right? So. So, Laura, technically, no, you don't have to, because only three commissioners need to sign it. You don't actually have to. So, And, Carl, that's all I have for tonight. Okay. When we're done signing, we can uh, move the meeting. There might not be 15. Call it eight, Laura, if that makes you feel better. Yeah. Well, to get you guys stamps. <laughs> well, we could get high tech and be electronic. We could have, you know, some sort of a uh -oh. signature. First, we need to get Steve a smartphone hey, hey, before hey, we can there. get there. Yeah. So you guys go really high tech, and who's going to manage that? <laughs> That's not comforting. As opposed to the oatmeal box that he has over there. <laughs> A string. <laughs> and the string. What do you have, a, a jitterbug phone? <laughs> <laughs> mm, you guys are lucky that you're my boss. <laughs> I used to, back in the, I was at the 80s, I had one of, you know, the cell phone bricks. They used to be in a suitcase. Yeah, I had one of those in my car. That's my emergency phone in my car when I was it, it was about the size of a small briefcase. You had to unzip it, you had to flip the antenna up, had a gigantic battery. Back in, I don't know, 87, maybe 86. Isn't it interesting to think that, that we actually had that technology back then? Every, everyone I mean, thought I was crazy. You have like a cell phone? like the dark ages. And people had cell phones. <laughs> oh, I didn't get a cell phone until 99. Oh, really? Well, my company required, at the time, my company required that I had a school. They could get a hold of me regardless of where I was for emergencies. Yeah, I need one. That's they had, had me this one with like five watts. It probably caused all sorts of problems because they need, I, need, I was at like military bases and things like that, so they need to be able to get a hold of me anywhere. Probably gave off some sort of well, nuclear the EMF, level radiation. High levels right of uh, next EMF to your head. radiation, you know. What is that? Is that it's important? It's like, no, it's a copy of one oh, of the applications. Okay. Is the 14 thing one here? Okay. Me at work a lot. They'll send me the, give me 50 training certificates to sign. And right, at the end of my I can't, I can't even write my name anymore. I can recycle anything you guys don't want. Sign. It's easy enough for me to just throw in the box. Graduation certificates at the end of the year. Thank you. So I don't know if you need to sign this or not. No, Laura does not. All we need All is right. this. There we are. Phew. So, if we've signed everything, I'll entertain a motion to close. Go for it. Mr. Chairman, let's close the meeting. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded to close the uh, August 16th meeting of the Georgetown Conservation Commission. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining. Motion carries. Good night, everyone. Click. <laughs>